Hey, Jay. Yo. You want to come on in, bud? You're going to be on the couch. Anywhere I want? No. Ah. Oh. How's that feel? Who'd you buy those trophies? Got this, feels, it. this feels nice. Can you fix these? I don't think that's a good spot for it. That's where I focus it. Oh, okay. Is it too much? Should I, should I wait? I'll give you this yeah. until, uh, until we get started. <laughs> now, I hope you don't mind. I have some really <clears throat> expensive honey that was gifted to me that I'll use as a sweetener. I think that's great. Where's the honey from? I, I usually tend to only go... I usually only go local honey. Oh, for your for allergies. Yeah. You think I have any allergies? Fuck out of here. I don't have any fucking allergies. Matter of fact, anyone who has allergies... Are you ready to start working, by the way? This is a paid regular thing for the comedy store, just for my veils. Oh. Are you a paid regular? Yeah. Then I guess you won't be needing this. Oh, hands. It's only, the only reason I said it. You don't think I know? You don't think I do my homework? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm feeling good. Gold, I'm ready. Gold, gold. I am ready. So... You want to cut to? You want to uh, bring it to the theme music, or you want me to do it, or you want to do it together? Let's do it together. All right. On the count of eight, we're gonna snap, look the camera, and say theme music. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Theme music. Theme music. Well, you said snap, and then say theme music. So you went eight. Theme music snap, and I went. You may have, eight I may have done it wrong. Theme music. I believe you, but it's your show. It doesn't matter. Here we are. Sure. Scoot doo, blabbery blue. Scoot dee. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if a lot of people are home audience. Our car audience definitely doesn't know. They don't know. This. But the home audience, I don't know how much they pay attention to. So we have our Take Your Shoes Off logo for the title card. And then as it dissolves into us, that big logo goes down into like a watermark almost into the corner. And it always lands, oh yeah, bing, on the beat. That's intentional. We are very intentional here. Do you think anyone in your car or home audience thinks that anything you do isn't un intentional? I don't know what the car audience is even thinking not watching this podcast. You miss everything. They didn't even... Yeah, they didn't see that. Whoa, I can't believe what you're doing right now. You were punching a... a Don't a, tell them. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Jay, Jay? Yeah. Jay, welcome to take Rick, your shoes off. dude, how long have you been trying to do this? Uh, I think since the pandemic. Could you do me a favor? And I'm okay with it. Your coat is off the blanket. Why don't we go ahead and bring that back onto the blanket? Yeah, simple as that. I almost couldn't see that jacket. <laughs> it's camouflage for those of you yeah well, well, no, don't tell them don't tell them god damn it john michael um <laughs> how much would it bother you if that really was off the blanket it was off the blanket i know it didn't that bother me too much but if what if i took it right now and just threw it onto um it would bother me a little what would bother me more is your lack of respect of my boundaries but we've all been there not knowing when people are serious or not so i'd forgive you but please don't i love respecting boundaries let's cut to um, a clip almost <laughs> <laughs> the, the car audience will be here. Well, cut, let's cut to a clip. And we're back. The car audience missed a good one there. So, um, I, uh, I had a, I would love it if you just did have a clip of me, like in a coffee shop where a guy was like, Hey man, could you just back up? And I'm like, yeah, I could do that for you. Let's cut to it. And then I'm like, how did you have that here? Let me see it. What I'm, Liquid Death's new iced teas are available now with free shipping on Amazon and at retailers near you. Take your shoes off podcast listeners, get 20% off your first Liquid Death apparel purchase. Ooh, available exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash Tyso. That's liquiddeath.com slash Tyso for 20% off. They're one of a kind. Ah, oh, peril. My finger's bleeding. <sighs> Whoa. Watch out for that. Anyway, uh, I think we've been trying to do this since the pandemic. Yeah. I had a reschedule on you. 
then why don't we hear your version? I remember. No, you tell me. You, I want to hear it through your lens. Sure. Go ahead. Bring the, yep. Letter boxes in. Bring, yep. Now we're a little black and white. A little noir music. There I was. Busy. It's the pandemic. I'm having a hard time. Oh, are you going to do the music? I thought I could do a trumpet. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little distracted by that. I don't I'm doing my best. <laughs> okay. Well, what happened? Um, so uh, I had to reschedule. Oh, where are they? Oh, I was doing it again. There we go. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> In between washing my bags of chips and having panic attacks, I was podcasting. At the time, I had the guests out on the balcony. I wouldn't even let them in the house. Hell, Sophie Bacon had to take a piss over the balcony. So you're, cl- so I'm saying, you're saying climb down the balcony and pee in that uh-huh. bush? I'll we'll, do it. We'll be right back with a word from our sponsor. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be fast, though, because I'm going to get pee shy. You know, I had to reschedule for reasons I don't even remember, but I do know when I asked you back, you weren't interested. I asked you again. Still weren't interested. Something happened on that third time. I realized, wait a minute, am I missing something? Puff of smoke that reads, uh, saving animation budget, so don't do it. Uh, and then uh, you, you were a little upset. I don't remember exactly what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I do know that I didn't recognize what you were upset about. I think you felt that I left you hanging or something because mm-hmm. of the reschedule. But I also know this was during a time, which I'll let you talk about if you want. I do know that you were going through in your life where you weren't in the mood for stuff and you were stepping away, I think, from comedy, if not from extracurriculars of comedy. Yeah. And you're like, I still want to do it. I'll do it when I'm ready to come back. Yeah. Oh uh, No, I was never I never had anything. In you I was going through a divorce and I was just like, I cannot even find humor. Right. So I wasn't doing podcasts. I quit my own podcast. So it was never I was yeah. always. Yeah. Let me do the check, 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 check. So I was just like, yeah, I just need some time for like myself and just to not be out in the world. You know what I mean? I was never mad at you, though. I didn't think you were mad at me. I just, it's, it's just the energy you, you would you spoke to me in a way where I'm like, oh, yeah. But I also understood you were going through some things. Yeah. Yeah. So I would check in every like four or five months. Be like, you want a pod? I know. And you're like, yeah. And it was great. And then finally, I was just like, all right, I'm ready to go. And you were like, done. Let me get you a date. I mean, you said it was you had never been so excited to have anybody on. Hmm. No, that's what you had said. We'll cut to a clip. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Um, I actually posted it. Uh, we'll put a thumbnail up. We did the Netflix is a joke. Uh, we did comedy for the line going in to see another show. I yeah. think it was they were going to see uh, Kevin Rock. It was Mulaney. John Hart. <laughs> no, I think it was. Um, uh, fuck. Uh, Kat Chappelle. All right. We had a good time. Yeah. I mean, well, you are just, you're just crazy. I was like, hey, I, they asked me to do it. And they're like, is there anyone you want to do with? And I'm like, one person. And they're like, who? I go, Rick Dave Lassman. Chappelle. <laughs> Chappelle, not available. <laughs> right. And uh, they were like, oh, hell yeah, let's do it. And then you show up, you bring a camera guy. You're like, I just hired this guy to get day. And then He's I was great. just, yeah. And you just, you know, you're just a one man show in yourself. Wow. You know, there's a, there's a, I got a ragtag team with us that really help out. And we're just really grateful that we have such a great home. I just love the live audience here. They're just amazing. (laughs) That's just, that's somebody in the audience going. (laughs) You know what I always tell people about me and you is you remember that? I mean, of course you remember that time at that audition where we were both. Well, how did that happen? Yeah. I probably have a clip of that somewhere too. Yeah. What was that for? (sighs) I have no idea. Bad horse impression. Yeah. Uh, um, we're just both sitting for. Well, you got to show it, but we're I don't sitting, know where it is. I think it was my move, and then I, then you were like, "Let's videotape it." Yeah, one of us went in for an audition, and then the other one b- kissed the other one. Yeah, that was back. That was back. I in love like that the, you can't even feed me a pineapple, but you're like, "Yeah, I'll kiss you in the mouth." This that was pre COVID. One organic pineapple. Yeah. Give me your fingers. Just put it in my mouth. All right, but don't breathe out. Hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on. 
Use your teeth. Oh, is this only since COVID? My OCD got real bad during COVID. And gotcha. it has since gotten so much better, but still not back to where I was. Yeah. Um, like when I was a kid, it was really bad. It got better. COVID brought it back. I get that. Yeah. Um, well, are you are you happy now? Are you funny again? Because you haven't made me laugh yet. Yeah. See, is that a thing? <laughs> he, um, yeah, a little bit. I, I was happy. You know, you're just, I think, I think people don't really... Uh, understand that how much divorce because every comedian you ever seen that gets divorced is like my life's so much fucking better my ex and that's not the case for me you right. know what i mean i was like no she's an awesome person and i have kids and you want them to have a good life you know and uh there's a lot of navigating that goes on i just was like at the time i was like i couldn't on a weekly basis be like trying to create humor on camera you know did it change like that was it Scoot. a what me? Your your funk, your depression. I don't want to do this anymore. To wanting to do it. Did something happen? Scoot. Or was there like slow build back into? All right, let's get back into the funny. Slow build. Slow build. What advice do you have for divorced comedians who want to get back? Which is <laughs> a significant part of our audience. I think to it's, be honest yeah, with it's, you. Uh, I think for anyone who's divorced, I think it's like you just take your time and I think take time, check in with yourself, and like try to see the other person's POV as much as possible. How did you do that? Therapy? Did you ask questions to her or? No, I just listened a lot, you know. And to what? To what she would say and feedback she would give. And, you know. After you guys split, you were still talking. Oh, yeah. We still, yeah. We have a very, we, you have to. You're going to talk the rest of your life. That's, should we get her on the pod? No, that would never, fly. she would never do that. Get her on the phone. I wouldn't. Who will answer your phone first? Your ex-wife or Rory Scovel? My ex. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we have kids, you know what I mean? Right. So it's, it always, it, it, that's, that's the whole thing too, especially if you have kids. If you don't have kids and you get divorced, do whatever the hell you want. But if you get divorced and you have kids, you just, you're like, you want to have the healthiest communicative relationship for your kids. How do you navigate that with her beforehand? Was there a contentious breakup? Was it just a slow falling out? And then follow up with that. And I need to ask before you answer, whatever it was, where do you go? All right, listen, we need to come up with a game plan for the kids. How do we figure this out? Yeah, go. it was pretty natural. It wasn't, a, it was, it was kind of a slow, it was a combination. It wasn't like a immediate or a slow build. It just happened. But just like before we knew how we wanted to have kids before, like how we wanted to raise them, that was before we even had kids. You know, some people just have kids and then all of a sudden you find out, oh, I want to do it different than that person. Let's that cut to a clip. McDonald's is turning up its sauce game with Sriracha Max Sauce. Now through Saturday, get a free medium fries and soft drink when you purchase a new signature sriracha sandwich or any of our other signature crafted recipe sandwiches. So hurry up and come into McDonald's today. And we're back. What was that clip going to be? It was a McDonald's commercial I did a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, though. Uh, you know, so then we just we both had the same. We were very open of like, oh, yeah, we we're going to this is how we're going to talk with the kids. We, you know, we just navigated it do you have examples <sighs> cut to a clip for a limited time mcdonald's is taking up its sauce game with sriracha max sauce take things up by dipping your mcnuggets in this creamy sauce with just the right amount of spice and how do we take it up even more by offering a 20 piece mcnuggets for just five dollars and i think that sums it up uh -huh. right well, yeah you know it's better ingredients better toppings yeah mcdonald's two special patty sauce lettuce cheese you know Glug, 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 glug. We'll replace those for different gulps. <laughs> What's wrong with my gulp? We have comedy gulps. Okay, got it, got it. Um, anyway, yeah, I think it's just communication and um, knowing that the kids Give me are, some examples. Uh, you know, before I don't just call her, I text before I call. I text and I say, hey, are you free to chat? That way I don't just like ever catch her off guard. I want her to know that you I'm You don't want to call her while she's getting... I don't Drilled. want to, potentially. Yeah. Right. She might be with someone. She might be working, whatever. I don't ever just pop by her house. I always like my kids will be like, can we go by mom's? And I'm like, oh, let me check, you know, for that reason. Right. I respect her space. I never go into her room at her house. You know, like I know people that just like, you know, it's not my home anymore. Oh, was, she lives in the home that you lived in. Yeah. That's where you podcasted. Right. No. Yeah, I did for a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where I and came then on I, your podcast. Yep. And then I moved and then went, oh, you know, um, I feel like Sebastian Maniscalco. Am I saying his first name right? Yes. Um, <laughs> like anyone's getting the first name wrong. 
he that bit he has where people used to stop by and now oh, yeah. now like you know they knock on the door what's going on here and they're house? hiding yeah i feel like he would respect your boundaries with your ex he'd bring an entomans we always had an entomans yeah. around my nana Those always for the guests yeah my nana always had an entomans nana that's your um mom's mom yeah and your dad's mom was also nana or is that grandma. nani nans no it was just straight grandma new noons would you have uh just grandma and grandma yeah bill burr uh talked about how everybody has different names for their grandmas i like that you say grandpa what do you say i papa? say that papa no i say grandpa what I don't do have people say grandfather right yeah and then again that's my, very rich yeah my baba my mm -hmm. my pappy or whatever he's got all these weird my zuzu <laughs> I don't know if people always have it's always like a uh, short word said twice. Yeah. My la la. I know that for for like I know na na bubba. <coughs> and I do think that's funny that like there's people like like boo boo or you know like yeah. Ozzy Gaga. Like everyone has their own yeah. kind of things. I gave my mom the choice. I go, hey, what do you want to be called? Because we're going right. Nana for uh Oh, so Nana's my, taken. Yeah. I go, Nana's going to my, my ex's mom. And I go, but you can have anything. And she's like, Okay. Zuzu. I, I go, you want to be like the maestro? You can be right, anything. Right. What'd she say? She's like, no, grandma's fine. Classic. I'm like, take something dope. I like grandma. Because grandma, not only is it a name, it's also a title. You know what you're doing. Do you? You know what I tell my kids to call me? Pops. I go, you call me Pops. They go, dad. I go, no. Pops. To the oh. point where like, that's what, if I ever have grandkids, everyone's calling me Pops. Yeah, Pops works for grandpa. Yeah. Pop, pop. No. Pop, pop. Nope. I don't think I was ever instructed on what to call. I just, I usually call it dad when I'm with him, dad. And when I talk to him, I say my pops. I love that. I tell them, they call me daddy or dad. I go, nope, pops. They'll never call me pops. But you want them to? Yeah. Do you want me to call you pops? I would love it. I told them, I go, I'm going to start when I'm on set and I'm directing. I'm just going to tell everyone That's just great. calls me pops. That's great. I love that. <laughs> That's a good name for a special. Call me pops. Call me pops. What would be your close, uh, opening and closing joke? You don't have to do the joke, but like a premise. <sighs> call me pops. Because it's got to be around like I'm a dad now. I'm trying to control my kids, but they're really controlling me. Divorce. You know, you talk about all that stuff. So what's the opener? That they don't control me. That's the difference. I think the opener That's the point of view. would be like an 80s sitcom where I'm walking to the living room and like, you know, and they're just like, oh, here comes Pops. And you know, it's tough for, for someone to say, hey, what would your opener be? But here's the deal. It's got to be this. They, you go trying to control them, but they're controlling you. You know, you, you know, it I doesn't could. have to be that. That's just like I was just pitching. I'm not telling you what it is. I'm saying like, that's how like I would the call me Pops. The opening joke would be. Uh, um, fuck. Probably something like that. I'd be like, like, show that you're annoyed. Fuck. I mean, I guess I'm a dad now. <laughs> uh, nobody really told me. And then it would be like how, like, you're a kid, but you're in charge of kids. So now the kids made you be an adult. And then my closing joke, if I would call me pops, uh, would be kind of like in Rothaniel. Did you watch Rothaniel? Mm -mm. Uh, Gerard Carmichael special, where he reveals that, uh, spoiler alert, his actual name is Rothaniel, not Gerard. Oh, uh, and we don't know why it's called Rothaniel. I got to watch it. Is it great? It's very good. Yeah. But at the end, spoiler alert, that's part of what it is. He says, it's not like that you even was talking about it, the whole special. It's like, oh, my name is Rothaniel. It's like, oh, that's why it's called Rothaniel. Yeah. So you got to get the pops thing at the end just because that's what Gerard did. Wow. Imagine if you open up with call me pops. And I was like, now what? And they're like, well, what else do we have to stick around for? <laughs> exactly. Well, my new special is called Sounds Like Bruce. And that is, uh, I think it just came out or is about to come out. Yeah, April 19th. It's about to come out. Yep. And, um, <clears throat> or just came out. <laughs> Who where, knows? Where do people watch it? YouTube, J. Larson Comedy, YouTube. www.youtube.com slash J. Larson, L-A-R-S-E-N Comedy. S-O-N, S-O-N. J. Larson. Larson. I always heard Larson. Yeah, no, Larson. There's, there's a number of different spellings. Do you own um, w, the website no. J. Larson and Larson? No, because it's not my name. But it would forward it. Like how people had, like the Facebook would forward to Facebook back in the day. Right. Pick it up before this airs or you're going to get. <laughs> the people in the car don't know what just There's happened. There's just a land grab happening. Just everyone's <laughs> trying to get S-E-N. Uh, I think Sonam Obsessian <laughs> talked about not having a website. And then after this, somebody bought it and made the domain name go to this episode. But now she can't get it. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. 
Thanks. <laughs> I've bought I've bought websites just for like you ever buy any web? My uncle used to do that. He of course just you hoarding people. Yeah. What do you get? Well, he had staples.com. <laughs> That's a big did one. He, did he get any good ones? Yeah, he 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 uh so he had usps.com and sold it for 80,000 bucks. It could have had so much more now. But he sold it to the post. Did he really? No, I made that up. Oh, man, that would have been dope. But he did have some good ones. Shout out to Uncle Bob who put his Tyso trading card here. Yo, UB. Uh, What else, man? That's it. That's all we... Thanks for coming on by. Dude, I'm so glad we could could catch up. This is one of those podcasts where I want to have you on both to create the content, but also it's an excuse to, like, I would would have done this at a coffee shop with you without the microphone. I know. I would have loved that. Do you want to just... Should we just get out of here? Cut to us sitting at the coffee shop after we get the scene of me bumping, <laughs> oh, no, setting yeah, boundaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, what do you think of that drink? Scale of one to ten? Yeah. It's like an eight eight. I am pleasantly shocked. It's it's lovely. Because that that is <clears throat> I don't have all my things. So that's kind of pieced together. It's got a great finish. That's the thing. It's got a creaminess at the end with the oat milk. Oat milk's one of the most underrated milks going. Really? I think oat milk is the is the second most popular non-dairy milk after almond, which has been around, which was like the first one to market. Yeah, of course. So I don't know if I agree that oat milk is underrated. You're I do right. agree that I love it. Soy gets a lot of shine. I know, but it does. It's not good for the... Uh, <clears throat> it increases your estrogen if you have too much. So I try and stay away. You know what's the best milk I've ever had in a latte? You're not going to guess. I'll give you three and I bet you don't get it. I'll get it number one. I'll guess number one. And I don't even like it and I still agree. What? Classic milk. Nope. You had two more. Macadamia. Nope. Rice. <clears throat> no. Hemp. Hmm. Hemp milk. In Seattle. Thin. Hemp milk is thin. Well, pff, I don't know. Hemp Please milk or milk. Either way. Milk or milk. Whichever one you prefer. Well, I mean, I do Let's know Let's roll that- the tape back and make sure that we saw Rick saying milk. I didn't say milk. And now back. Right. Um, you know, the uh, <clears throat> milk.com also bought milk.com just in case. It's and the they're milk. genius. Yeah. yeah. It just forwards back to milk. Yeah. You know, they thought that the more they bought, the better. Go, go, go. You're not a pun guy. Do you even write jokes for stage? Or yes. You just get up- and I am a pun guy. I have a character. That is, uh, I've been, I've been doing for years. He's a, um, he's a guy that loves puns. In fact, it's maybe his favorite thing because he sees how much other people love them. People love, but he doesn't understand how puns work. You want to see? Yeah, I'd love it. Yeah. Um, you want some more coffee or do you think you have enough in your glass right now? (laughs) Sorry. The caffeine (laughs) is getting to me. How does it do? Good. Yeah. Yeah. People think it's funny. <laughs> Do you like it a latte? Lot. There Lot. we go. There we go. That's an old Sebastian Maniscalco joke. What? He's like, I'm at the coffee shop and see something. They go, all right, see a latte. See a latte. <laughs> you get the hell out. He just was like. Man. Couldn't take it. You know, Sebastian is probably the only L.A. based comedian that I don't know in some capacity, like or more specifically, they don't know who I am, I think. Like I haven't had conversations I, and um, and one of the biggest wants I want on this podcast is him. I think he's one of the funniest comedians ever. Yeah. I saw him at uh, at a grocery store a few days ago and. Oh, my God. Tell me. Nothing. Nothing. I said I said I did exactly what I was supposed to do. I just. Nothing. Yeah. I I did go. I don't even know what I was going to do, why I did this. But I saw him there. And I always look at the hot bar at this place to see what's doing. I wasn't going to get anything. I didn't need anything. But you want to see what's doing at the hot bar? Always want to see what's doing at the hot bar. Yeah. If I'm hungry, I want to get something. If I'm not hungry, I'm curious. Do what's, I your, want, what what, what's your go-to at the hot bar? Well, I've never done it. Oh, well, depends on the... Well, I, I go yeah, to like Air meatloaf? One. Air One has a gluten-free, organic General Tso's chicken. And when they have that, I get it, even if I'm not hungry. I look at the hot bar the same way I look at pornography when I'm not in the mood. Every now and then, you have the time. Let me put something on. See if something goes tingles. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, I could do it. Okay. I don't need it. Yeah. But if they have something good. You get it for the house. So I walked to see what it was doing at the hot bar. And uh, 
I looked next to him just in case he was like, oh, you're that guy from the uh, that award winning drama. And uh, he didn't you know, I, I didn't really press anything, but I just wanted to be near him. Yeah, he's so, he's he's great. Yeah, he's the best. Um, you know, one time I was supposed to it was near Thanksgiving. Oh, and I was inviting uh, Nick Swartzen over to my house. Shout out to Nick Swartzen for his thumbnail here. Nikki. And uh, I was like, hey, man, do you want to come over? I'm having some people. Over. He goes, nah, I'm going over to a game night. Ooh. at david cross's house david cross and uh, i'm like all right and uh i go to the grocery store to just like pick up stuff to have at the house that night and who do i see at the grocery store we'll find out right after a word from our sponsors how does jennifer coolidge sound oh 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 how does she sound can you, can you do it I think, that's, I think that's jennifer coolidge when she's getting fucked and has gas <laughs> Ew. Oh, thank God for my liquid death. Urgh. Did you know that liquid death actually has three flavors of iced tea? Ooh, no. They have gr the grim leafer. Ooh. They have rest in peach. Yummy. And armless palmer. Scary. Have you ever been mouth dried? <laughs> All the time. Oh, it sounds like your mouth is dry now. Why are you talking like that? I just, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> Why don't you give that liquid death a try? Oh. It squirted on me. Gulp, 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 gulp. Mm. We'll cover that with gulps. Gulp, 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 gulp. Liquid Death's new iced teas mm -hmm. are available now with free shipping on Amazon and retailers near near you. As an added bonus, take your shoes off podcast listeners get, holy shit, I thought it was 5%. They get 20% off their first Liquid Death apparel purchase, available exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash Tyso. They got some good apparel. We'll show some pictures of their apparel. <sighs> Exclusions may apply. That's liquiddeath.com slash Tyso. Oh. <coughs> and we're back. David Cross. What? Yeah. I was going to guess John Mulaney. <laughs> and I'm like, someday I'll work the crowd going into your show. <laughs> uh, no. So I see David Cross, right? So right. I'm, I see him. I don't say anything. I get into my checkout and he's two behind me. And I'm, I have like, I'm buying a ton of groceries and the, the woman working, she goes, you know, it, you're spending enough money. You get a free turkey. Do you want your free turkey, your free turkey? I'm like, yeah, I'll take my free turkey. You know, <laughs> say, no, I don't need it. I have a turkey, but I'll take a free turkey. So then she looks back and sees the next person and then sees David Cross's carriage. And she goes, oh, you're going to need a free turkey too for all your, you know, supplies. Uh, do you want a free turkey? And he goes, no, nah, I'm good. And I just go. I'll take his turkey. <laughs> and then she's like, you want a turkey? I'm like, yeah, I'll take his turkey. And then he's like, actually, I'm, I'll, I'll, dick, I'll take my turkey. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I was like, yeah, but you said you didn't want the turkey. And he's like, well, yeah, but now I'm, I want to take the turkey. And I was like, yeah. I go, so do I still get it? I mean, he said he didn't want it. I didn't get the I just got my turkey. Right. But what I wanted, so it was one of those, I got home and I'm like, God damn it. I should have called like the next day. I'm like, I should have got, gone to Swartzen's house, given him my turkey, and been like, take this to David Cross's tonight. Apparently, he needs. He did say, yeah, <laughs> he hey, is struggling for some turkey. Heard you needed a turkey. <laughs> I would have loved that, but no, 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 no hot bar. You know, no hot, right. no hot bar. Now, did you already have a turkey for Thanksgiving? Back then, this is a long time ago. No. So, what did you do with the turkey? I think we cooked it. I can't remember. I had a roommate at the time. We had people over, maybe I threw it in the do you oven. Know, people that don't cook turkeys, do you know how? I feel like a turkey and <clears throat> salmon are two things that are probably easy, but if you've never done it, you got to look it up. I look up everything. I always look for cool recipes. Nice. Do you cook salmon? So, no, and I'll tell you why. I don't eat it much. I want to eat it more because it agrees with me. Mm -hmm. Or should I say it no. has a nice fin-ish to it. <laughs> but the truth is... I uh, I don't love it, so I'll get it sometimes. Yeah, I turkey. Uh, excuse me, salmon and eggs. I don't love egg whites. I don't eat the yolks. I'll vomit. But I'll. But they agree with me. Um, should I make a yolk there? <laughs> it's just. But the thing is, when I eat them, I eat it with a glass of water. And every bite I take, I like it's a pill. I bite it and I go like this. Salmon and eggs. It grosses me out a little bit. So then why even fuck with it? Because it agrees with me <clears throat> interesting mm -hmm. i love that you're like my body makes all the decisions i'm trying my to listen to my buds. body more yeah 
I've been waking up earlier. I've been going to bed earlier. I've been staying away from gluten refined sugars. I like all that. Uh, I am trying to get, uh, I'm actually, uh, as much as I want to get even more protein than I am, I'm doing a lot less meat. Gotcha. I saw a thing, I think it was Dr. Uh, Hyman. Am I saying it right? Is that his name? He's the guy who kind of created functional medicine. I'll yeah. put his Instagram handle here. He's great. Um, but he was showing that uh, we should be looking at meat more as a garnish than the main course. So if you divide your plate into four parts, uh, you have starches in one, greens in two, mm -hmm. and your protein in one. So like six ounces tops of, of, a, of a meat protein. I get that. Yeah. I get that. That's how I break down my kids' lunches. They get a fruit, a vegetable, a starch. And six ounces of steak. I, my daughter, you know what she took home to school? You know what I made her for school the other day? A no. salmon avocado roll. You make your own? Yeah. Do we have a clip? <laughs> Do we have a clip? I got a photo. We don't need it. But I have it. We'll put it here. Thank you. In um, five, <clears throat> four, three. The car audience is going to hate this. One. Wide screen. We'll put it in the room cam. Whoa. You could go like this. Whoa. Look at it. Whoa. All right. Did it. Pretty cool. Um, Oh, God damn, I can't remember what all this was. Oh, plates. My son doesn't roll. love salmon. You know what I mean? But he'll eat it just like you eat it because he just like knows that like it's good for him. Right. So he loves bacon. So I wrapped salmon and bacon. I saw this clip and cooked it. And I said, I did this for you. I go to try this. You love bacon. Maybe you'll love these. Like I made like salmon bacon bites for dinner. And he took one bite and he's like, nah, I don't really like it, dad. And and the recipe, they then coat it with like brown sugar. And right, but you're, he's eating it to be healthy. That's like... Exactly. So I didn't coat it in brown sugar and all that. Right. I didn't do that. Okay. My daughter has got like very sophisticated palate. She's seven. And that night we're like, I'm in bed and we're like doing stories and stuff. And she goes, hey, dad, uh, that bacon salmon. I go, yeah. And she goes, I really liked it. Hmm. She was like, I'm surprised that Reed didn't really like it because he likes bacon so much. I go, yeah. She goes, you know what I think would have really made it work? And I go, what? She goes, just a... It's a little bit of sugar, a little sweetness to it. And Did I'm she just, know that that's what you no. were? No. And I'm just like, how? who are you, seven years old, being like, I don't know, maybe a sugar element to that bacon-wrapped salmon that you made? Do you think she wants to be a chef? I mean, we cook a lot together, and I got her, like, a knife for Christmas and stuff like that. What kind of knife? Switchblade. <laughs> it's mine. You think that's Scoville? No. Where is my phone? I don't know. I like not having my phone near me. I know. It's great. I want to get a landline so I feel more comfortable leaving my phone Stop. upstairs. You think the same or are you making fun? I had the conversation before I got here. Today? Yes. I'm getting a landline. I'm getting it. And, and you I'm, only give it to certain people. And I'm not getting a wireless phone. It's going to be in the kitchen with a long cord Love so it. I can cook with it. But you know what I'm going to do next? I know exactly what you're going to do. What? You're going to buy that thing that you put on the end so you could go like this. Oh, I always <laughs> wanted one picture. of those. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, Yo, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> but you see the infomercials, you have to go like this. Ah, and then it's black and white and the spine is like the head fell off. Yeah. No, what I'm going to do is put a list on the wall next to the phone. Of who has it? No. Phone numbers. Phone numbers for my kids. So if they want to talk to their Nana, they just pick up the phone and call. You know that's what's sweet? They can't do the that now. The first person you thought them to talk to is your ex's mom. Well, they well they well if they would call anyone, they call my ex's dad. They love that guy. Pop up. No, just pop up. Peachy? No, just pop up. Sugar boop? They actually call him poopsie poopy. <laughs> poopy cat poop. You know Al Madrigal? Yeah. He called me one day and we're in, and I, I met the kids in the car and I put him Shout on. Out. <clears throat> I put him on speakerphone. I go, Al, you're in the car. They got the kids in here. He goes, Oh, what's up, guys? And they're like, hey. And uh, then he's just like, he starts working the room. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, it's me. I'm a little baby. <laughs> yeah, good. And the kids, they start laughing. He goes, oh, poo poo pee pee. <laughs> yeah, I do that. And so the kids are dying, right? Uh -huh. So I see Al and his wife, I don't know, like a week later. And she's like, Jay, Al couldn't stop talking about how hard he was crushing. <laughs> the kid. I go, Shut up. You serious? She goes, yeah. Two weeks later, he calls. Same situation. I put him on speaker. He's he's going for it. No, not, not hitting. And he was so like, he's trying every different angle. Couldn't get it. I take the kids. We get home. They're doing their homework, whatever. I call Al. I go, you really tanked. And he goes, ah, I was trying everything. He just wanted it so bad. I, uh, I'm really good with making kids laugh. And I've thought about doing a special just for like the whole audience is like, you know, eight to 12 year olds. Oh, my God. Kill, killing for kids. 
Yeah, I bet you could. Mm -hmm. I have so many special ideas. What else do I have? First of all, you have so many ideas, period. Why did you make me, which I am, an ideas guy, which is awesome. It is such a bad thing. Because the way you squinted, you, your squint made it a bad thing. I was doing it more. You made, as, you made your daughter salmon? <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. That's how you interpret. That's how you took it. Cut back. What, what I was saying is, don't just limit yourself to saying you have so many ideas. You just have so many ideas. Look at your podcast. Like, I, I could say something about this thing. You'd be like, oh, yeah, we could come up with, you know. I mean, I wouldn't buy this ottoman, but I'm saying, well, you know. because Because it's one of a kind it is did you build it woodworking pelican built the tray that's under it <laughs> i know no, this is pottery barn oh um so is that blanket you're on excuse me that quilt that's intense dude. i thought i had a sneeze i'm sorry have you ever done anything like that what's the craziest thing you've ever done to think that you would turn a woman on but was just like because you know there are guys that think that I have. I did once. I wonder if I have tape of it. I did once, and I've thought about turning that into a bit. I did that on stage once, where I talked about like there are people that go, and they keep doing it. So it had to have worked for them at some point for them to think it could work. Because to think that you could be like you see a girl and you go, "Excuse me," <laughs> yeah, or whatever the fuck, and then a girl's gonna go like this. But what if there is some like core thing that just like ignites in someone off of things like that? I think it's based on the girl. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I am so, I'm the other way. I'm when I do turn a girl on and I don't mean to be as self-deprecating as this sounds. This is just me not trusting people more than thinking I'm disgusting. Like just thinking people are being nice to me because that's what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But when a girl is interested in me, I'm like, don't worry, stop. Yeah. Not that I don't want her to or not that I don't think she should be, but I'm like, tell me the truth. It's fine. (laughs) Like, I'm not the hottest. I'm not the best. It's fine. Do you do you do you enjoy the pursuit more than actually finding someone to like you? Because some people just like love the pursuit of like, you know, like preparing for a marathon. I know people who finish a marathon. They're like, oh, that's it. But preparing for it was everything. Well, you know what you're discussing is it's about the journey, not the destination. And you could. You could argue either end of those being a healthier side. I have side. the poster in my room. Cut to a clip. Mm-hmm. We're back. Just send me a picture. Just send me a video of you going, here it is. <laughs> um, you know, I got to tell you, uh, I, I'm i not going to call this pursuit, although a lot of people would think it's a pursuit. Mm-hmm. I love flirting. Love. Mm-hmm. And that's not just a romantic thing. And it's not just with women. Right. Like a lot of. I th- I would I would argue that you like flirting as well because you know that's funny? What, uh, what we do. Yeah, as other. you're saying that, I'm like processing it. I'm like, oh, I never even looked at it. I talk to everybody, mm-hmm. and I my goal is to make people laugh no matter. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna do it at a grocery store. I just want to look across an old lady bag, <laughs> just wanna, to see. I want to see Sebastian in an air one and go. Will you do my podcast? <laughs> you, you just want to see Sebastian do on stage? Like I see this guy in an air one. <laughs> He's doing a, he's doing a tongue, doing old lady across the. I said, "What are you doing?" <laughs> when people do a Sebastian impression, it doesn't even have to be spot on for it to work. That's no. how good. You know who does a decent one? Who? A pretty even a good one. Do you know Josh Nasser? Yeah, of course. Shout out to Josh Nasser. Yeah, I, Nasser. I know. I've heard his Sebastian. He loves doing it. All right. You out? Don't shit on me. He's going to the bathroom. You know what I want to do, actually? Because I'm a little hungry and I don't want to eat on the pod, but I want a little snack or something. And um, I I tried these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Got <he. laughs> You know, nut, like mixed nuts. Yeah. And um, I didn't know where to get them because they were from an airport in Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Melissa Villasenor. <laughs> is that her oh, laugh? That's Mickey Mouse, I guess. That's her doing Mickey Mouse. Oh, nice. Um, and I tried these peanuts, and I didn't know where to get them, and I hit them up on Instagram. And that's one of the cool things about, like, having being verified. Like, sometimes pe- people write you back. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm like, where do I get them? They're like, we'll send you some. And uh, I already know they're amazing because I've I, had them. So I'm going to give a free plug, and I want to see this. this so you're going to do an unboxing right now? Yeah, I thought I would do a little unboxing. Yeah, okay. They're really good. So I got into nuts um, 
with rosemary in them. I've been okay. adding a lot of rosemary. I make, uh, uh, I love fries and I'm staying away from fried food. So I've been making like homemade baked, air fried, but baked um, French fries. Sweet potato? I do sweet potato I, and I do russet. Okay. Um, and uh, before I starch, I always uh, <laughs> cut them up and, you know, you put them in cold water for like 10, 20 minutes. Uh -huh. And then just avocado oil, uh, a little salt and pepper, and I do some finishing salt at the end. Yep. A ton of a rosemary. rosemary, ton of rosemary. You chop it up fine. Um, no, tell, I don't chop it up at all. I just, I just, I just peel it off. Okay, and like you know that. what you do same with basil. The you oils. rub it a little to yeah, get I the know, oils out. Yeah, the oils. I'm tell, for Can the, I ask you a question though? You're not buying rosemary. I don't grow it. Is that what you're asking? I'm saying you could go for a walk around this neighborhood with a pair of scissors, and rosemary bushes oh, really? are everywhere. Oh, I, that's a good idea. I don't know if I've ever noticed by smelling them. I, I've never, I haven't bought rosemary in 20 years because we always had a rosemary bush. You just plant one if you need to. That's a great idea. I made one. It's the size of your chair. Hey, tell me if you like this name, Nutsack Nuts. It's shocking, but it's but it's kid friendly. I guess so. Look at this little setup they sent me. This in the airport. Look at this. They also sent me a mug. Don't know if I'll use it, but don't know I won't use it. Ultra fresh nuts and a t-shirt. Probably won't wear that. The nut sack. Yeah, but look at these. Here they are. Oh, look at coconut oil and sea salt. Kanye Cayenne, excuse me, and Chipotle. <laughs> coconut oil. Imagine if they were the only brand getting on the Kanye, <laughs> like post. Yeah. This guy's nuts. <laughs> Not as nuts as our coconut oil and sea salt <laughs> nuts. Um, here, they only sent me one of the rosemary and oregano, but this is it. They're so good, man. Yeah. Nutsack Foods on Instagram. Do you want to try? Yeah. All right, we'll do a quick. You know what? I want to save these for me. Yeah, I, I well, open up the figured uh, as much coconut oil and sea salt. No, ca cayenne and chipotle seems fun, right? Can I maybe make a choice of which one I'd like to try? Well, those are the two. What are they? Cayenne and chipotle, or coconut oil and sea salt. Yeah, I, I'll go cayenne. Yeah, it's it's, it's a bigger punch. Yeah. Now, oh, I guess mug. I guess you you can't use the mug. Did I break it? Yeah. Oh, I mean, no disrespect to you, nutsack, <laughs> but uh, I broke your mug. Um. I guess it's still usable. How often do you use the handle? Hit me, for me, every day. Do you really use the yeah, handle? every day. For but, something this size? Well, that now it's like a good, like, good for pencils or... Uh, <laughs> yes, this is for pencils you know and I mean? pens. Yeah. You know, I actually went through all my pens and pencils the other day, yesterday. Yeah. And boy, are my arms tired. But I found a bunch of them that I could keep in here. Nutsack. Yeah. Well, you know what? Shout out to Nutsack for the rest of the episode. They, I mean, sponsor and they didn't even know it. Um... Rosemary and sea salt. Yeah, these things are... So I don't want to do too much... Oh, look at how great this is. I think... Is it resealable? Oh, no, I thought so. Grab me. No. It's definitely yes. resealable, the top. You just rolled it yeah, back Yeah, but down. I thought the sticker part. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going to... I don't want to go to town chewing in these microphones. So let us please go away while we eat. And we could also, you know, mute during this time. But just respect the, the car audience, especially. Sure. Uh, I'm also going to give you, after a wet paper towel for your hands, will you please be careful afterwards because this has some seasonings. Yes. I don't need a... That's great. Yeah, so we'll just uh, we'll put a little music under this to help hide some of the sounds. Oh, we're okay. Let me tell you what I like about it. They taste fresh. They also taste healthy. I don't know what that means. The cashews are soft with a crunch. They're not overly seasoned. Could use some rosemary, though. It's a great nut. I just love that they're cashews. I love cashews. They're the best nut. Name anything close. Well, you... <laughs> <laughs> I find my my favorite non I'll get it in a second because I have a couple more. My favorite non the best tasting and texture non dairy ice cream. Shout out to Van Lewins, they have these. Is cashew milk. I have found that for some reason a cashew milk ice cream doesn't agree with me the way salmon and eggs do. So I stay away from cashew milk ice cream. But if it doesn't bother you, to me that's my favorite. Have you had? Oh. No. 
<sighs> hey, I, isn't avocado uh, ice cream supposed to be like the best ice cream? I've had avocado mousse. I haven't had it a second time, and that's by design. Yeah, I, I listen. If I'm doing ice cream, I'm just doing ice cream. Are you lactose intolerant? I used to be. You know, that's an old Seinfeld joke where he goes, "I can't stand lactose, and I just won't tolerate it." <laughs> um, These are amazing. Yeah, they're really good. Whoa! And I have a. You know what I like right now is there's a little bit of spice that's still in the back of my my tongue. Want any more? No, I'm good. Oh, take one more half. It's really jazz, and you, this is what you needed, huh? Well, also, I haven't eaten much today. Mm. I do prefer a sprouted nut. Not taste, feeling, but... what? what can you give me an example of sprouted nuts? I'm going to look it up. It's something about when it's harvested, it's easier to digest. Interesting. We'll be right back. Do you want to um, pull out your special while I'm washing my hands? Call Dad is back or something? Call me Daddy? Call her Daddy? Isn't the name of your special? Call her Daddy? It's, no. No. It's, call me Papa? The special is called Sounds Like Bruce, uh, April 19th on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, J. Larson Comedy. Um, Give people a take, a take of why they should watch it. Give them a little teaser. There's a lot in it, you know. There's a lot of perspective on me, observational storytelling, some great stories, some parenting, my perspective on the world. Shot in Austin, Lance Bangs directed it. Very talented guy, um, and I'm really proud of it. Listen, I'm not going to do too much eating, but those nuts. So now you're going to a straight pizza? So I just want to show you, you know about this. One of my favorite pizzas in L.A. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say it, though. Maza? Moza? Matza? Moza. They have a cheese list by design. Yeah. I don't get cheese on my pizza. I don't get it, but is that, I don't understand it. Is that gluten-free? I've been cheating. I had some of the best gluten-free oh, pizza shit. I've ever had Where? last week. I can't remember. It was from Air One. I'm pretty sure. I don't want any pizza. It was an offering. Okay. Well, you were leaning in. I just thought maybe... Getting away from the mic. This pizza is... Sh have you had matza? Yeah. Moza. You know the secret to Moza is Monday nights. Is it Monday nights at the bar? Pizza's half off at the bar at Moza, you know, at Highland and Melrose? Uh, yeah. Is that where it is? Mm -hmm. You know, ever since I've been um, having this podcast being so successful, I get everything delivered now. You had Moza delivered from there? Yeah. That's that's quite a ways. Yeah. I got two pizzas, so I know it would be worth it. Does it come back? Does you get it hot? I put it in the oven when I get it, yeah. and it's great. Now, I'm going to plunge something else from Air One now. <laughs> <laughs> this has been an all-food app. It's their red pepper hummus. Love a red pepper hummus. You want to try a little? Sure. You don't care if I break this off, do you? No. Doesn't sound like a great crust, to be it's, honest. It's, it's been in the fridge. Yeah. Since last night. So it's, I mean, I feel like the hummus is going to be tainted a little bit. It's, it's, I'm not even going to, you tell me. It oh is yeah, a harder that's than great. Crust, no, that's, that's a great, that's a great hummus. It's an amazing hummus. And also, you know what I use I hummus for these days? My salad dressing. Wow. Well, I, cool. I dip the fork in the hummus. I don't pour it on. I dip the fork in the hummus. And then I eat my salad. Oh. Come on. I use hummus in the salad dressing. Oh, you make a you make a doctor your own dressing. Yeah, of course. Which one? Both. Well, you make it from scratch. <clears throat> yeah. Olive oil, red wine, vinegar, uh, salt, pepper, lemon juice. What kind of salt? Parisian. No, just straight up. And then I go sometimes with some hummus, sometimes some mustard. It's delicious. You know what I've been doing? I make a bunch of chicken. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I just have it in I'm the listening. fridge. Use your finger on the wet paper towel. And then I use it on the fridge. I mean, I leave it in the fridge. <laughs> you just put the chicken on the fridge? No. And then I eat hummus. I eat the chicken with hummus. That sounds so clucking good, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, my gosh. I love food. 
You work out at home, huh? Yeah. So, I reached out to this company because I like them so much. And they did an advertisement. Um, and uh, so I can't say this is not an ad because technically I, they advertise on my podcast. But because I asked them to, it's called Go Methodology. I do some food delivery services. I also order from Mazda Pizza. Give yeah. me the food. Moza. I think this is not only the best delivery I've had, some of the best food I've ever had. I like this it. This is a free plug right now. Yeah. Go methodology. Nah, but is it? You know what I mean? It is. I'm, I'm doing this. I wouldn't have done this, but, but I'm doing it? all these foods. So let me like plug okay. something that I really use. And yes, you could use my discount code TICE over 10% off. Sure. And they're just starting a beta test to roll out nationwide. But if you're in California, gomethodology.com. We'll put the lower third here. What I love about this, one of the things Glass jars. I'm not a plastic baby. No. Sometimes I do when it when it comes that way, but I try to avoid. Glass jars, look at this. Here is an, uh, a chicken, I don't even know, ancho chicken pozole, whatever, but it's a soup with the, the sauce. Comes separate. Look how fun this packaging is. It's beautiful. Look at this. Golden milk chia pudding. Take a, take a, take a look at this. Look how pretty. This food is so... Dude, I love golden milk. Do you really? Yeah. Do you know what golden milk is? I don't. It's like turmeric... Some other stuff. Oh, I take turmeric supplements, but maybe I won't. Do you want to try a little of that? No. Um, Greens are great. It delivers Sundays and Thursdays. The food is off the charts good. So now what I'm saying is I love food. I love having food in my fridge. Me too. I want to be able to, what do I want? I could order it, but also kind of like I miss this in cable because I don't watch cable anymore. But I don't know. I don't want to watch Robin Hood Men in Tights. But if I'm flipping through the channel and we're yes. at, starting act two, I'll watch the whole thing. Do you know why I love watching cable TV? Because it suggests stuff to us. Not just that. When you go to a commercial, you feel like you're watching it with other people. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Interesting. My kids love commercials. You feel, love why them. do you feel like you're watching with other people? I don't know. It's because like, it. there's like a break in it. And it's like we all have to kind of go through it. It's like we all meaning everyone in the room or everyone watching this everyone channel. Everyone watching it. Right. It's like we all have that time that like, oh, you're doing this thing. I don't know. There's yeah. something I like about it's it. It's almost the new live television. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you did live television, by the way. Ain't that the truth? That's why I could afford Go Methodology from that show that I did that ended uh, seven years ago now. Still one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life, you know. Undateable, really? The fact that no, not just undateable was fine. I I watched every episode, and I don't say that about a lot of shows that my friends are on. You what? Your show your friends are on? I try to watch every show that my friends are on. Jeez, how do you have the time? I just like to support my friends, you know. Um, but when you guys did, were doing that show, then it went where they went live for season three. Like episodes were live, yeah, that was and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I, I just, I, I, no one's ever really done anything like that. Yeah, the live was very cool. I don't know how great the product was. Um, it was, you know, some hit and miss. Yeah. Uh, it was doing it live, though. Man. Insane. It was so much fun. I can't even imagine what that was like. Well, you know, there's comedy and then there's drama. And, you know, you win awards for what you win awards for. What, <laughs> what award is that? What, this one from the sixth lead? From this is what I made from Undateable. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, this one. Yeah, that one. Hollywood Critics Association, the HGA's Spotlight Award, as we see it on Amazon Prime. That's fantastic. <sighs> it's got to be tough being on two TV shows, huh? Well, this one got canceled, so now it's one. Yeah, but it yeah. was for a little bit. Yeah. And that one will probably get canceled too. Do, do you think? Everything gets canceled. It's a hell of a perspective. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say that the marathon is nothing but training for it is a lot. I feel that way about television. Listen, does it get canceled this season, next season, and eight seasons? I don't know. I do know this. I love my co-stars. I have a great time telling stories. Yeah. And I could get all the delivery pizza I want. I still rent a home, but all the delivery pizza <laughs> I want. <laughs> I love it. No matter how successful you get, you still have to throw in like the little caveat. Like, yeah, do I still rent? Sure. <laughs> yeah, you have to be so successful. I know. To own a home here. Or just anything. I just love the fact that you're never going to lose your roots to just be like, oh, oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. Do I need to fix the tail end of my car? Yeah, I do. <laughs> but it's my car. And I and I own it. I'm leasing it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a lease. But whatever. I pay the payments. Yeah. It's technically an own. Yeah. For now. Mm -hmm. But everything is for now, including our time on this earth. You know, it's interesting when we think about it. 
We are literally stardust. And I don't mean that in such a spiritual sense, but I also do. You know what happens when a star explodes, right? No. Do you know why a star explodes? No. Are you interested? I'm 100%. I think I Have you been looking in the sky lately? What's going on up every night? <sighs> Buddy, I'm looking in the sky right now. Oh, I am. Sky. No, but I'm serious. Do we think the sky is what's above us? Is it out of our atmosphere or the cosmos literally inside of us? There is a universe of microbiome having a birthday party in my belly right now. Thanks to Go Methodology. That's gomethodology.com. <laughs> Go Tyso. But the star with nuclear fusion and how everything is happening and, and everything is banging into each other fast enough and hot enough and it starts to create all of what life is built on. And it starts on the lighter elements, our carbons, our hydrogens, etc. And as they continue to build, it builds the heaviers, our golds, until it gets to the heaviest of them all, the iron. Now, did you know this? That within a second of the star that starts to create and fuse iron, within a second, that's when the star explodes. It's that dense. So when, the, when, when all of these particles are out, shot out into the universe, iron was the last thing made. Okay. Can I just stop you? I would love it. 50% of me 100% believes everything you're saying and 50% of me 100% thinks you're making it all up. That's Why what I love about you. Of me? Huh? So 50 and 50. Why you say, if you said 50% of me thinks that 80% of this is because messy. Because you get what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> so we are we are just these things that from exploded from a star, and now here we are, borrowing time and borrowing an Audi. You know, oh, you own the Audi. I have it now for seven years instead of three. What's the difference? The idea that it's mine. You can make that idea that something is yours all you want if you believe ownership is just being able to be present and experience it. Mm -hmm. you know your marriage yeah, and i mean no really disrespect beautiful. yeah she's your wife until <clears throat> she's not yeah is she not yours anymore is she not the mother of your children is she's not a big part of your life i'll tell you what she is she's hydrogen she's carbon and she's a lot of h2o <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> no i mean okay but so yes i lease but it's mine <laughs> <laughs> so my car i can go to my car yeah I mean, I, I'm all, I, I, I love the stars. I love looking at the stars. I love experiencing with my kids. And Venus and Jupiter have been in the sky every night. And Mars, it's like... Are you using the app, one of the apps? Yeah. Sky Guide? Yeah. Yeah. It's good, right? My kids love it. So, like, when we got into camping in 2020, and we started going camping, right? And I found that app. And Sky Guide is the same one you use. I use yes. I can't remember which one it is, but whatever. Does it, it have is. good music when you're doing looking at the stars? I don't do music. We just look up to see where the planets are. And now my kids can just pluck them out. They're like, oh look, there's Mars, there's Jupiter. For the car audience, it's it has GPS and it, it tracks. So you're looking basically through a screen that defines the stars and the constellations that you're looking at. You can click on it, see how far away it is, yeah. how big it is. One of the greatest moments, dude. I'm camping with my kids in 2020. It's our second time camping ever. We're in this great campsite in um, Buellton. No, nope. Buellton. In Buellton. Home of Bu what? Buellton. Buellton. Bueller. 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 Um, he's sick. Um, David Cross. <laughs> what do you mean? When we came back from commercial, yeah. that was the reveal. Um. Anyway, so we're looking up at the stars. We, I, I got that app. We're like able to see where like the planets were. And so the next time we went camping, same place, sitting at the same thing, I got a telescope. And God damn it, you know how hard a, a telescope is to get focused in? It is so fucking hard. I got so frustrated. My kids still joke about it. They're like, Dad, you got Was it so a big telescope that you tra traveled with? Like yeah. If, like the whole deal, a real telescope. You know, you're car camping, so you can bring whatever you want. Was it your car? Yeah. Nice. I mean, I still have payments on it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're setting it up and we're like seeing all the different planets. And all we wanted to see, we've been talking a lot about the International Space Station. And I'm sitting there. I got both kids on my lap. I got a fire right here and just a sky. And I see this like light and it's not a satellite. You know, you know what a satellite looks like. It just looks like a faint star and it's just moving. It's like it blinks and then I don't see it blink and then it blinks. And I'm like, what the? And I pull it out, boom, and it's the International Space Station. I go, Christ. oh, and, it's, and it says it's it said it on yeah, the app. Yeah, that's on the app. Cool. The International Space Station and then the Hubble telescope are both 
on the app. Shout out to Rob Hubble Telescope who put his Instagram handle up here. <laughs> and we watched it go across the sky and we were so stoked. And then we're just sitting there and I and I just like, we're looking at the size of the moon, right? So then right. I, I just did this thing with, and my at the time my daughter was uh, six, six, five. She was just turning five. She turned seven in September. Right, so she was about to turn four, six. five. Yeah, she was about to turn, she, she was five. And uh, I'm like, look at the size of the moon. And then I, we looked up the size of the moon and compared it to the size of the earth, right? So mm -hmm. then I told them that's the size difference. And then I go, and then look, I looked up the size of Jupiter, right? What'd you call me? Jupiter. No, I would never say that. If anything, I'd say, let's go fly a kite. What did you just say? What? I didn't know. So <clears throat> anyway, I'm saying the Holocaust. Okay, just go back to Jupiter. <laughs> okay, so Jupiter... How so much did the Holocaust, by the way? What about that? How much did the telescope cost? Was it an expensive <laughs> one? Dude, you're good at that shit. Yeah, uh, it was like 150 bucks. Oh, yeah? I yeah. could have got it for 100. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Jew joke. Yeah, I got it. Um, I don't take humor in making fun of... Ever since your divorce? Ever since the divorce. <laughs> I used to be a huge... Together, the two of us, we laid into it. Sure. Yeah. Um, Jupiter, anyway, the size of Jupiter. So we did this: the size of the moon, how far it was from Earth, the yeah. size of Jupiter, how big Jupiter. Do you know how many? How far away is the moon from the Earth? Like three hundred eighty thousand miles? I don't know. You want to look it up right now? Yeah, look it up. <sighs> three hundred eighty-six thousand, maybe. Two hundred thirty-eight thousand nine hundred miles. Two hundred thirty-eight thousand. Yes. You know how how far away the sun is? How far? Eight light minutes. You know, if the sun exploded now, we wouldn't know for eight minutes. Isn't that wild? Yeah, that's dope. Um, hold sun on. Sun may have exploded. No one's going to see this episode. <laughs> Who gives a shit if I'm leasing or owning my car? They're not going to hear it either. Right. Well, this this streams live. Um, to the car. So then I I then I looked up the size of Jupiter with her and how many Jupiter is eleven times wider than Earth. Are we talking about Jupiter or my mother in law? Hello. <laughs> anyway, I did all these things. We started breaking down with my daughter, and she's five, and, and she goes, "Dad," and I, yeah, she goes, "This is a lot," and I go, "Is this overwhelming you?" She's like, "Yeah, I can't." And like, have you ever do you ever sit and think about the size of space and where it could go? Just thinking about the mm -hmm. infinite idea of space to me blows my mind sometimes. Mm -hmm. And to have a five-year-old be taking it all in and looking at the distance between here and there and the size and looking at barely a speck mm -hmm. in the sky Careful. is 11 times bigger than the <laughs> the earth. And it was just amazing to have her see like it overwhelm her. Do you know what I think would have made her like it a little bit more? Mm. If you made it a little sweeter. With some music. With some... From Sky Guide. <laughs> you like being a dad, it seems. Your Instagram sure seems like... Oh, it's my you favorite thing it. in the world. I always wanted to be a dad. Yeah? Always, yeah. From a very young age. Did you think about you wanting to be a boy, having a boy? Yes. Is Your your son is, is younger. He's the older. He's older. How we had a boy he? and then a girl. He's nine. I used to think I wanted a boy, and now I still would be happy with a boy, but I, I'm not... I'm not preferential to it. No. I, now I have both. And um, at the end of the day, I just want to be a dad. It didn't matter. Yeah. The only reason I ever re selfishly wanted a boy is because I didn't really have a relationship with my dad. And I wanted to be able to experience that dynamic father-son. You know what I mean? And you I were, never got it. Remind me what the situation was with your dad. He left when I was like two. And then we would see him very sporadically. And then after 10, I just never saw him again. I, I saw him once when I was 36. I have a surprise for you. He's dead, so. No, it was a nut sack. I was going to give you some olive Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The rosemary home. ones? No, no, no. The coconut oil. Oh. Even though the story I just told? Yeah, I wanted the rosemary. Okay, yeah. What, uh, how did your dad pass? And how did you find out? My brother found out. And my aunt called my brother, and then he called me, and then. Is this your, your dad's sister? Are you still in touch with any of your dad's side? I hadn't talked to my dad's sister in like 26 years when I saw her the day after my dad died. I have a surprise for you. Yeah. I'm also going to let you take home this nutsack pencil holder. The, oh, <laughs> <laughs> now it's a pencil holder officially. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, oh, that's great. No, I hadn't seen her in like 26 years. So he died. I was in New York 
doing the Today Show for this. I was hosting, you know, I used to host that bar travel show. Mm -hmm. And so I went home and my sister got in touch with my aunt who got me in touch with my dad's wife. And then I went and like looked through his stuff and that kind of thing. How did he die? I, I, he, he, I, they don't really know. I think he like maybe had a stroke and like then fell and hit his head. Something like Aren't that. Aren't you interested for genetic reasons? Maybe, but I don't, they didn't do an autopsy or anything. They just did, a, they didn't even do a funeral or a wake or anything. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I think he kind of lived, like he was kind of like lived his own kind of life, you know? I, dude, I didn't talk, I saw the guy once from 10 to his death. How old were you when you left? Three? Two. Two. Yeah. And then how'd you get in touch with him when he was, when you were 10? When I moved to LA at 24, we started emailing. I found him. You said him. at 10. At 10, he stopped. That was the last memory I have. I was like 10 years old when I saw him. Oh, he left when he was two, but still stayed in touch? Yeah, we would see him like on... Oh, I'm, this is horrible timing, but on the bottom of your right foot, there's a little hair that I think people might not like. You could throw it on the blanket on the floor. It's by your by your that, heel right here, this part. That's not the heel. The heel of the toe. I meant the toe heel. No one says that. What would you call this? The ball of your foot? I would call this... This is the ball. No, it's not. Really? That's the arch. For sure? Yeah. That does make, I, I know it's the arch, but Th I also... These are the balls of your feet. Makes when total you sprint, sense. These are the... How was an athlete like you not know that? Uh, I oh the only balls I ever paid attention to were the balls that I would put in the in the my a defender's mouth when I would slam dunk it. It, it took, took me a while. Too, it took too long. <laughs> it took me a while. <laughs> so would, you say, died. would you say you put your nutsack <laughs> when you were fucking dunking on them? I'll tell you, it depends. If they were rosemary, I put them in oh, my I'd cupboard. Love to try those. Mm. Don't know if I want to open them now. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So I always wanted to be a dad, and I wanted that relationship. You know. Yeah. It was like all I searched for my whole life, and now that I have a son. Um, I don't give a fuck what he's into. I'm into it as, as long, long as he's straight. No, I, 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 you were telling me that you want to make sure that your son is straight. This joke would work if I didn't have a other special called me being me also available at Jay Larson comedy on YouTube, where I talk about wanting to have a gay son. Oh, right. Because you, all the flack you took for publicly saying you wanted him to be straight. <laughs> now, tell me more about the Jews, the backlash. <laughs> Can you say Jews? I can. Yeah, I think you can too. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I, I see people mistaken mistake me for being Jewish a lot. I would never. But Homer Simpson often goes, mmm, steak. What does that have to do with anything? When people say mistake, I think of the Simpsons. Oh, mistake. Um, but I love it when people think I'm Jewish. I'm like, you think so? What about you is Jewish? Just because you're a storyteller? I don't know. People will say like, oh, you're not Jewish? I'm like, no. Like, oh, I thought you always thought you were Jewish. I'm like, oh, no. But I fucking love that. I don't know why. I just love that. I feel that way, which is also similar <clears throat> to being called Jewish when people think I'm from New York. I go, thank you. Yeah. And I never say no. I, I do, but I don't just say no. I go, no, but I have a lot of family from New York. Just to let them know, yeah, it's in me. Yeah, it's there. I could see you going into like uh, Russ and Daughters in New York and like getting something and being like, Ah, this is a little, this isn't exactly the way I wanted it. And they would be like, oh yeah, this guy's lived here for 45 years. Thank you. Yeah. Well, 22 years. I'm 22. I know, but you give off a vibe of like an older guy. Right. Because of, because of how emotionally mature I am. Right. What are you doing? I'm going to draw you. No. No, you're not an artist. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you obviously haven't watched me do stand-up. Um, um is for horses. <laughs> That's not true, though. That's the name of my special. When's that coming out? I think June 8th. You <laughs> <laughs> guessing a random... Yeah, why not? <laughs> I mean, June 8th. I don't know. Everyone, mark your camera. <laughs> Imagine the commitment if you're like, yeah. What the fuck? What? It's like, you call me a kike. Let me to check you, check you, check you, check 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 it check 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. I I thought you meant this, but you didn't. So no. 
you know, I don't love that it happened, but whatever. <laughs> you want some nuts? <laughs> Do you have a rosemary? Mm. How you feel right now talking with me? I love it. I'm feeling good talking with you. Yeah, I don't. This is the thing I love about you and what you do is I'm just like, I, you're literally coming into your world. This I'm in your world. That's you what know? the home audience feels. The car audience doesn't get that. They, the yeah, joggers, they just, what are they doing? You know, my audio only numbers have been going up recently. And I'm curious what that means. Because my YouTube, my YouTube numbers are, uh, have been consistently going up very slowly, but they keep going up. Yeah. The audio kind of <clears throat> didn't really go up. And now it went up a little bit. I wonder what that's about. Huh. Because I feel like people really want to watch. Some people just don't have the time. Joggers? Yeah. People who have to multi multitask. They go to the gym. Good good fix. You know what I mean? I see people all the time at the gym just like doing an exercise and then laughing out loud. And I'm always just like, what yeah, are, I do what that. are they listening to? Uh, Smartless, Smartless or Bill Burr. Yeah. Yeah. He I doesn't... don't find Burr that funny. Really? Yeah. His podcast or him as a stand-up? <laughs> I'm completely kidding. Dude. Bleep out that part he just said about kidding. Bleep out when I said that too. That's weird that you don't like him. So you don't like Burr or the Jews and you will need your son to be straight. I just see them all in the same category. Tell me your thoughts on black people. Bleep it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I joke obviously about like that. Just like the joke is here's a triggering things that people are scared to talk about, even though there's nothing bad being said, but just these hot, button things and i do see that some people when i i don't do this often but some guests get like legitimately uncomfortable and two things are going through my mind one the certainty i am 100 sure that 100 percent of me knows everyone knows it's a joke while also knowing that's not true and people don't know it's a joke and that's very odd to me when people don't know it's a joke you're saying guests or listeners guests don't believe that listeners will know it's a joke so they become uncomfortable for what if somebody misunderstands? Right. Or as Homer would say, mm, misunderstands. It's a joke. Yeah. Well, I don't know. There's just, uh, it, we're also in a time where people, you, you nuance has been removed from Not anymore. some. Nuance is back. You think? That's the name of my special. Nuance, nuance is, is back, back. And I'm going to open with. When's it coming out? Bleep that I, what I just said. <laughs> just that part. <laughs> June 8th. <laughs> Dude, you're going to, it's going to be a big day for you. Oh, yeah. Um, I had a, uh, you, you've done stand up on the spot, right? Yeah. And shout out to Jeremiah Watkins. Jeremiah Watkins. And he now has a new channel, stand up on the spot, stand up OTS, maybe it's called. We'll put it up for the yeah. YouTube people. He, uh, you know, like once he did it, he'll send you the thing. Be like, let me know you're okay with all this. I literally had to run it by people. I'm like, you think I'm going to be all right saying this stuff? You know, when he did that for me, I didn't want to run it by anybody. I knew for me. Yeah. And I said, there's some cuts I want to make, but none of it was based on being worried about getting in trouble. It was all just like, when I know I'm being filmed while I'm doing it, I know in my head how I want this to be edited. Yeah, I know. Well, that's a part of you. But for I'm me, saying, but I wanted it to be the experience. When I got up, I'm like, this is a safe space. It's a room where we have fun. Right. You're getting put on the spot. And we have to allow space for people to not be perfect in every single moment. I agree. And so for me, I was like, that's what we were doing in there. You know what I mean? And there was an Asian woman in there. Oh. No, and she... No, that she was there. Yeah, she made two suggestions that are like... They're, they're topics that might get could I, you... Could I hear what the suggestions were and could you use the accent? She didn't have an accent. Then how do you know she was Asian? I was looking at her. Oh, really? She looks Asian? Yes. How does someone look Asian? Exactly. Tell me, Asian. How, tell me how a woman looks Asian. She looked like other Asian people I knew. How? They well, had the same features. Give me an example of three. Uh, she had small hands. Okay. Very Asian. Small hands. I'll, I'll concede. Uh, she had... What's the most obvious one? Her hair in a ponytail. No, it's not just Asian. She had black hair. Okay. That's pretty much exclusively Asian. <laughs> she had brown eyes. And every time she made a suggestion, you wanted another one 30 minutes later? <laughs> but... The whole point is she made some suggestions that you were just like, whoa, okay, is this going to be, you know, whatever it's going to be. And then I said to her at one point, I go, what are you? And then the, then I was like, someone was like, oh, and I'm like two seconds ago, a white dude asked another dude, what are you? And so I was like, is there a world where you can get? And I was like, no, this woman said, use the word honky. You know what I mean? Was this too much? No, it's, it's actually. Go on. It's just reminding me of something. Okay. 
And so well, I can't only imagine what you're what it's remind what clip I'm we're gonna see. Cuts, next. It, cuts of you fucking me in the ass. It's just like, <laughs> trust me, it works in post. <laughs> But it's like when you're in the room, everyone was there and you're like, we're all get, we're all there just to have fun. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just go and leave this and have fun. Let it be what it is. When when you're calling something back of somebody that went on earlier in the set to you, my thoughts were there are some things I might want to be taken out if they took that part out. Does that make sense? Yes, of course. That was the first joke. The first time so I went up. thought. Because she had suggested honky to the person before me. Like when you're in traffic and the person in front of you is going too slow? Yeah, a honky. Right. You got One it. of those people that's just nonstop on the horn. Right. And I just got up right after. I'm like, God, I I love the word honky. I love being a honky. You know, whatever it was. Does honky that was, just mean white person or is it more like a white person that lives like in the, in the, in the sticks? I don't know. I just always assume it's just like a way to something you can call a white person. If there wasn't enough. You know? Um, no. All right. Though uh, you know, I did an episode of Stand Up on the Spot, and I also ended up talking about how sensitive everybody is to the times and how I used to just go, you know, we'll cut to a clip. American diners. I remember the first time I went to American diner. <laughs> you know, it's funny because at the time I, um, I didn't even realize, I just thought it was a diner. <laughs> For real. I'd go to different things. They were all different. You go to Jewish delis, a Russian deli, you go to a Denny's. I didn't know the difference. Hell, I was a kid. Then you grow up, and you're around different types of people, ignorant people, people who hate, people who were born into hate. That ain't American. This is an American diner. <laughs> Fucking queer. <laughs> oh, you're going to go to the deli? I love the delis. Yeah, delis are great. I'd like to get the, you know, the borscht. No, I'm going to a Jewish deli. Fuck you, you fucking Jew fucking bitch. <laughs> That's what it is now. When we were kids, we used to go to all the restaurants. I never knew the difference between a Chinese restaurant and a Denny's. I was an idiot. <laughs> but I was happy. Could you hold this for a sec? She said, no, I'm sorry. I, Chinese restaurants are better than Denny's. Ah, get her face, it works. I grew up, I had friends of all different all at all different restaurants <laughs> Jewish restaurants black restaurants Asian restaurants slow restaurants <laughs> restaurants in wheelchairs restaurants that uh, you know didn't speak the language well I didn't care give me my crayon suck my dick give me the pie <laughs> you think that's too long maybe we made it shorter alright I think it worked what's your favorite part about stand-up comedy and it doesn't have to be while doing it. making it's the people lifestyle. feel good you mean that a hundred percent it's all i ever cared about was stand-up i loved it that's what i that's why i talk to people in public it's why i make jokes <laughs> to people everywhere i go i love seeing people laugh change their perspective and i like challenging people to see things a different way than they did when they were walk, walked in the room let me challenge you to see things a little bit different than okay when you walked in the room no i jews are jews that's it <sighs> You, you can edit that out. I don't want... We'll make some edits. All right. Thank you. And edit that out. We'll make some edits. Well, just send me a cut before you put it up. I'll send. You, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll send you the link when it's up so you could share it on your socials. Okay. Um. So my, my challenge to you is, you said I love making people feel good. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that. How much of that is that you are the one that made them feel good? <sighs> Does it offer you value to be somebody that has that ability? Well, of course. Speak on that part of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Charlie Rose. Um, I think, I mean, I definitely think that it feels good and rewarding to be someone that can do that job. You know what I mean? It's the job that I chose or 
I don't know. I always say that I feel like stand-up chooses you. You don't really choose you it. You do say it nonstop, and it's starting to become kind of odd. Now, do you think you rescued your dog, or did your did dog, dog rescue, rescue you? you? Ooh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 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 honky! Goddamn honky! Oh, sorry, I stepped on your thing. Or did I just get there quicker? No, I knew it. other sentences. Before we even got into the, uh, uh, I already knew Honky was coming. It was three down the road. I had to build to it. Interesting. Now, tell me what you like about building to tell it. Tell me. No, tell me. Go back. What's your favorite thing about stand-up? Because I'll tell you, you know what I don't like about the lifestyle? This is what's really hard about it. Especially now being divorced, I have every other weekend with my children. 50% of the days in a year I have with my kids. 50% of the days you have 100% of your kids. Exactly. Right. And that means every other weekend, right? Right. Is part of that schedule. Makes it hard to tour. That means 26 weekends a year I could be on the road. Do I ever want to have a life again? Do I ever want to have me time? Do I ever want to do stuff? And then even when I, the kids are with me, I don't want to go do shows the nights that they're, even yeah. though they're asleep and I can put them to bed and then go do a show. I like going in at 940 and seeing which way they're sleeping in the bed and mm -hmm. adjust their blanket and, and go up to my daughter and like nibble on her cheek just to see if she'll give me an attitude. You know what I mean? In her sleep, which she does. How is it? What's she go? She go, you know, she always, and my son w won't, he'll just be sweet. And, and it's, I love it. And I just love being there. And, you know, so that's what I, I used to love about the lifestyle. Cause I didn't care would be like doing shows at night and being out. And I never, I, I was never like, a, let me go out to bars and hang out. About. My life was like, I'd work, and when I didn't work, I'd do shows, and I loved working, you know, and I'd write during the day, and I would do shows at night, but now that I have kids, and especially since I'm divorced, you know, I am like, it's it's lost a lot of that for me, because I don't want to go on the road and be away, I want to be home, you know? I have a pitch for you. Go for it. Your next special includes partially a documentary of getting the special together, and instead of going and traveling the country doing comedy clubs, you go around the city of Los Angeles, PTA meetings, uh, bake sales, cookouts, camping, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, whatever the stuff might be. And you're doing material there and you finally shoot your special um, at one of those places. That could be cool. Outdoor amphitheater would be fun. The only problem is then I'm like turning myself into a reality show with my kids and I don't want to do but that. But you're not, you're not doing a show. I'm saying you just document some of it for context. If you didn't document it, you could still do that and you could still obviously take it on the road. But there's, in fact, you could take it on the road or do whatever and then fake it. But I do think there's something fun about showing, you know, uh, let's say it comes out June 8th, 2024. Uh, you put June 9th, 2023 and October 14th and November 6th and you show throughout the time you working just for like a cold open for like three, four minutes. And now it's finally here. You have the big show. Where is it going to be? And we reveal you're at a, your, your son got in trouble. And now you're at the you're in front of the school board, you know, and you're doing your, your oh, stuff yeah, in front of tight. around this table of, you know, 12 people. And you get to have in the context of the documentary part of the stuff that's been going on with your son or divorce or whatever. Yeah. What do you think? It's got potential. Yeah. I'm an ideas guy. All right. So let's go back to you and what you love most about the lifestyle. So this, there's more than just these two categories, but I want to acknowledge that there's comedy in business, the business of comedy. Um, and then there's stand up comedy, mm -hmm. right? Business of comedy includes stand up comedy, includes sitcoms, includes improv, Acting, includes writing, writing, directing, podcasting, producing, yeah, everything, uh, social media, yeah. right? Um, I've said this on my podcast before, but comedy, not just the business, but in an even more global sense, just comedy and being funny is easy. Stand up comedy is very hard. And the reason it's hard, one of the reasons it's hard is because there is an expectation to it. A special is between a half hour and an hour usually. And you need to keep their attention and you, there should be an arc and there's a point of view and people are there to laugh. That same thing, that expectation that is put on this thing that we've agreed to do is both what I love about stand up because I get to play with it and change it. And also what I don't like that, do I have to do this thing? Yeah. I don't want to do this thing. <clears throat> I don't mm -hmm. want to do, I don't want to do this thing. I also don't like the idea of going on the road and doing two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. I don't want to do one show. I did it. I don't want to do another show. Well, that's what you got to do. That's what you're supposed to do. You make more money. It gives me the option to uh, be there. Uh, more people, more times that they can make the show. It's the only way the club will have you. Yeah, I get it. I don't want to. 
having to do two shows makes me not want to do one. Yeah, I remember back in the day doing three. People still do three when they're selling stuff out. And like, yeah, well, that's a different story. When you're selling out theaters and you're making so much money, you don't give a shit. I wouldn't want to do more than one in a night. Yeah. Well, you could, when you get to that point, you could put them all in. You know, it depends. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know. That's one little thing. That's not the main thing. But the thing is like, and here's another one. Uh, and this is any job anywhere. And we're lucky that we get to do something that doesn't feel like a job a lot of the time. When you don't want to do it and you have to do it, I'm fine doing that with all this, this podcast is so much work and you don't want to do it, but it comes out every week. Every job I've had, schooling, relationships, communicate, whatever it is, you got to do stuff. There's something about stand up. When I don't want to do it, I do not want to do it. Mm -hmm. So you know what the funny thing for me with stand up? I could be exhausted, tired, depressed, would name it. If I have to get on stage, it kind of all just goes away. Okay. You know, so I like that about it, but I just ultimately I'm like, you know, it's also, yeah, there's a lot to it. There's something great about being able to make people feel good, make people laugh. Yeah. Um, there's also some times where I'm just like, oh, is there a way that I could look at myself and just feel complete just being funny for my kids and just being funny well, for the, the people around me? I think so. Like, I don't, it, I think there used to be an element where I was like, oh, I need to get on stage and make people laugh, you know, like, and now I'm just like, oh, it's, there's plenty of people out there doing it for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the thing. I don't feel that way. I need to make people. I don't. That's what I don't feel that thing. Yeah, I need to go make them laugh. Yeah, I don't feel that way. Yeah, I don't either. So what's the drive other than wanting to get better? That's my drive. Is I want I want the specials. I want to have. I want to make the thing. Yeah, it's not. But the, you can being on the road. Yeah, and it's something that I've been actively for about a year now since I came back to stand up working on, yeah. and I'm and I'm motivated and I'm excited by it, but. This idea of this, like getting up in this high and this feeling a certain way that I've heard people talk about that I've always understood, but I don't know, maybe I will feel that way. I, I, I don't. I don't feel that way. I think doing a special in front of a, nine people at a PTA meeting, if you contextualize it right and make it, is just is even cooler because it's something kind of unique to you. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't like. I don't like going to the club unless I'm in the mood. But I don't like going to the club and being like talking to people. I don't mind being social. I just mean like you have to, what's up? How's your set? And then like talking and then, and then oh, you're up next. Oh, this, and, this. and then like, I don't want to, I, I just want to eat. Yeah. I don't know if I love it anymore. What? Stand up? Everything but stand up. Uh, who said this? I, uh, was it, uh, I think it was a Dennis Rodman quote. I think it was in this, that MJ doc where he goes, they don't pay us to play basketball. They pay us for everything else. Yeah. I like being on stage. Don't love everything else. Yeah, yeah. I get, you, you, you're, you're preaching to the choir here with that. That's kind of been my mo from Jump Street before kids, before always. I I just and for me, it's a social ang not anxiety, but awkwardness. I was just like, mm -hmm. oh, I, my value is what? I thought I was just coming up here. Like I also probably I think I had at times fear of like being really good friends with comedians because I'm like, oh, I don't want to be friends with like I didn't ever see myself. I just always saw myself as a funny dude and I love getting on stage. And a lot of times like the protocol in stand up, I didn't take. I like went different ways around things and didn't do it intentionally. Example? So I, I just didn't. I never became a door guy at the store. Yeah. I got recommended by a guy. I went up. I showcased for Mitzi one time. She passed me. That was it. What do you say? This is my value. Uh, could you finish that thought? I didn't know what that meant. Like thinking that in stand up, sometimes it's, and this isn't just stand up. This is all business. It's relationships. It's how much you hang out. It's mm -hmm. spending time. It's building connections. Anyone I know right now who's like killing it, not in stand up, but in other ways, their friends have given them the jobs. It's not like right. anyone. You, it's very few people that their talent is what soars them to the top. You know who did that? Gerard Carmichael. Gerard Carmichael is one of the only people I know whose talent just shined out so hard that he just skyrocketed without. I don't think people were putting him in positions. I think, you know what I mean? I think that because of how good he is but some before he was uh, a success not only the way he is now but before like he had money at all uh everybody who was in high positions really liked him and, and of course so, everyone that so ever was the, around him really liked him yeah he so, had it so that is also people helping true 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 i think i'm was, saying we all get help we Jack all get shepherd help. said that uh, uh i'm paraphrasing but people want to work with people they like more than that are talented 100 percent, yeah 
I remember that because I was up for a commercial one time. I remember I was up for a commercial, me and another guy. Got through all that thing. I didn't get it. I did. Yeah. I'm here to announce the launch of McDonald's new signature sriracha sandwich, and they decided to turn it up. It's topped with crispy onions, fresh baby spinach, and kale. Onions and baby cream. That's not all. They decided to turn it up even more. They created an exclusive sriracha mac sauce with just the right kick of spice. Yeah. Yeah, but it's here only for a limited time. The McDonald's signature sriracha sandwich. Where are you going? How many did you do? Well, I did one, uh, and then they had me do five voiceover ones. Gotcha. After that. Well, I didn't get it, and then I ran into a guy who, like, I don't know, he just knew, and he's like, yo, and I go, yo, I go, he goes, you didn't get that spot? I'm like, no. He goes, don't feel bad. The director hired his buddy. That was his buddy that got it. Right. You're going to be seven days in the Caribbean. You want to be with your friend or do you want to be with some guy you've never met? And I was like, oh, wow. What did you, what did you, what would you rather be with? I think I'd rather be with a friend, but oh. at the same time, like interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, it's, you know, it's whatever it is. You know, sometimes you might love working with friends and other times that can ruin friendships. You know, do you like working with friends? You and Brent work together I, a lot love it yeah i love collaborating so much i love bits so much i love back and forth so much that stand-up doesn't have that and that's okay but it used to be you're waiting to get up or you're doing shows with people and then you go you get something to eat with them and then as you and your friends become more successful you're not doing that with them anymore and it becomes very much less collaborative yeah and what used to drive me same thing with basketball was with stand-up it's why i did it so much was the collaboration was the doing it with other people and the playing with other people yeah and then you fall in love with the thing because you see yourself getting good at it and then you keep doing it um and i decided and i still think i made the right decision but i i it was the nba or it was stand-up and i knew in the nba i mean i had a 10-day contract uh, i knew i wouldn't i, I wasn't going to be great in the nba uh, I didn't know how much money I could make <laughs> you did, did for the cast. Absolutely. And you did not have a yes, dent. When? What year? 2013. Really? Mm -hmm. Was LeBron on the team then? Or was he in Miami? LeBron was. LeBron was. Wait, did you play in college? I played at college. I played at college. Intramural. But I didn't get good until my senior year. Well, junior year. Uh, I knew LeBron. One of my good friends is good friends with LeBron. And we kicked it. And, uh, is that how you got the 10 day contract? I don't think they would have given it to me if they didn't think I could play, but LeBron did bring me in. Yes. That, this is not real. Google it. 10 day contract. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Didn't play once. Mm -hmm. Um, got to, got to sit on the, for a game one time. Cause there was only there was, two, uh, Pistons at home. And there were three games during those 10 days. And the other two were away and they wouldn't let me go. And it made me think of in high school when I was on the JV team, uh, excuse me, the first year uh, I played basketball, it was actually junior varsity and they didn't have enough jerseys, away jerseys. So I would sit on the bench, but I was wearing a shirt and tie. I was like, even in the NBA, I can't do away shit. <laughs> uh, but I got, and I didn't get to get in. Uh, we lost, uh, but I practiced with them for two weeks. Damn. Yeah. I still don't even know if I believe you. Absolutely. That doesn't matter. We don't need to get into it. I've, I've talked about it. I know before. you can game. I love that. I you think I'm phenomenal? No. Cut to a clip. Hit that, Baldy. Catch the fucking ball, dude. You're not aware of how other people perceive you. What are you talking about? Good take, you idiot. Ah. What? Are you not entertained? Got it. Go left, go left. Let's go, let's go. Are you fucking nuts? I am phenomenal. I got big balls. I got a cool guy haircut. I got. I've seen clips, and I think it's impressive for as as far as comedians go. Yeah. Anyway, um, stand up uh, special that you have. H how do you feel? What pride do you feel in having a special versus being somebody in a comedy club that made them feel good? Like, here's something that you've accomplished tangibly. Like, here's this, this like, trophy or this this check mark, whatever you want how to look at it, yeah. versus, ooh, I just made people feel good. What do you, what do you like more? Um, I don't know. I mean, I love the idea of accomplishment. I can't wait to put it out because I put a 
lot of time and effort into it and I produced it and I, you know, putting your own money behind yourself. How much? It, it costs a decent amount of money. I'm going to give, I'm going to get two guesses. You say more or less. Okay. 20 grand. More. 45 grand. You might be very close. Could be a little more, could be a little less when right. all said and done. So between 40 and 50,000. Yeah. What, what was the bulk of the money? Where did that go? The production. Cameras? You know, crew. Camera people. Camera crew. Lance and his crew and getting them all down there. And, you know, he was doing, uh, you know, maybe you bleep that number. I don't know what he wants people to know that he, you know. You said cool. it. We have it. No, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's out to the public. It's in. Oh, yeah. There's no going back. Fuck it. Do you really need it out? I don't know. I just don't know what he. I, people want to know. I want to know. So people want to know. Okay. So then just lose the Lance thing. So then I don't have to say that. Bleep every time you said that word. His name, you're saying? Sure. Do you want, after, by default, we're going to bleep his name every okay. time he said it. However, when you leave, you'll call, you'll ask, what do you think? You'll let me know. Okay, cool. We unbleep. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I love the idea of putting, finally putting something out where people can watch, especially, I love the idea, like, because I don't go on the road that much, that people who are fans of mine in Minneapolis or uh, because no one in Minneapolis is booking me to come out there or Madison, Wisconsin, because I'm not getting booked to go there or Philly fans that want to see my stand up now they can watch it you know they're not seeing me live and i'm really great at crowd work like really great let's see let's roll the clip ladies and gentlemen you may know him from that bar show when he did the tonight show please put your hands together for jay larson hey what's going on what do you got the uh you got the uh, little cat there the little the asian cat it's great <laughs> how can you tell he's asian i mean i don't know i just I always see that I saw the the uh, the writing on it. You know what I mean? Do you know what it says? <laughs> Usually you put a dollar in that, right? So I'm tied to it. Are we in a Thai yeah. restaurant? Yes. Oh, I was looking for a dollar. What happened? I don't want to be rude. I, I didn't mean to be talking so much. I know this is a live show. It's not. Yeah, no, it's fine. I love that you're talking. You know what I mean? You got the mustache. You got the, the glasses. You came out tonight. <laughs> How did you know? I can see it on your face. Yeah, I'm very, very proud. Kind of Jewy, right? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, but yeah, no, I did. I came out to my to my uh, family uh, right before the show. And that's great. How do they feel about that? Well, my dad said he always wanted a straight son. Um, but no, I was, gay son's way better. You can do whatever you want with a gay kid. What could you do with a gay kid that you can't do with a straight one? Straight kid's all straight. And mm, what should I do? Gay kid, you're like, you get him. You know what he's all it's about. True. You know what it's I mean? True. Yeah, it's just you. It's just another good, Yeah, you get it. Oh, my God. Do you have a special? Like, it's, is that okay I'm talking to you? Yeah, this is great. You, if you want, if you don't like the crowd work experience, although the special has elements of crowd work in it, uh, sounds like Bruce on J. Larson Comedy on YouTube. Can we cut to a clip? Sure. My daughter, she's very strong for six. She's ride or die, and she will cut you. That's a fact. <laughs> like, let's rob a bank, bitch. We're back. And we're back. And we're back. Yeah, I see it. And we're back. And we're Scoot back. Do. Take your shoes off. Daiso. Get these at rickglassman.com. Are they big sellers? Uh, Yeah. Nice. I've probably made some money off of them. <laughs> <laughs> Bleep the word Lance and when I said it. From then? Huh? Yeah. Um, Do we just fall out of the pocket? I Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's so many circles, whichever ways we go. I feel all right. Yeah. What do you think of my socks? I think uh, I didn't comment on this before, but at the beginning when you thought that most of the things that I do are intentional, I was thinking, but I didn't say like the socks choice. Thanks. I figured you knew that those were going to get some stage time. Well, you said make sure you wear clean socks. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I tell that to people because some people don't wear socks even. Yeah. What are you doing? Does that gross you out? Yeah, it grosses me out. I just got a whole six pack of alpaca socks. Whoa. <sighs> are they nice? Are they do yourself uh, a favor. humane? Or alpaca? Are they human or alpaca? Alpaca. Um, now, is that, is, is he kill with your kids, alpaca? Or is that just <laughs> Al Madrigal? Just, just Madrigal. Alpaca, huh? That's like a, it's like a thicker wool. Yeah, it's nice. They're just super soft. I'm a Bombas baby. I like Bombas. I like Bombas a lot. These aren't Bombas now. No, I can tell. 
Uh, I've been getting into more colorful socks because sometimes it's not just about the comfort. Of course, you want to add a little pop, you know what I mean? Just between that, you know, cuff and the shoe. I always wanted you to call my style of sock pop. Sock pop, yeah. Uh, that guy, his socks, real pop. If you could give the home audience two pieces of advice in no particular order, it doesn't have to be the best, but just two pieces of advice. One is going to be a free-for-all piece of advice, and one of them is going to be something specific, I'm going to say. Okay. When you have family, whether it's just a wife, kids, both, an obligation, a pet outside of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to be able to feel fulfilled by offering and giving them as opposed to drained Mm -hmm. and then a free for all? What do you mean offering? Well, like if you were uh, uh, working, uh, cleaning up a, a kitchen, right? If you're working, you're cleaning the kitchen. You're cleaning the kitchen. You're helping people. It's draining. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you're you're giving yourself, so you're getting drained. Versus when you love something or care for something, you're doing it while you're doing something for them. It actually fills you up. Like I love cooking for my children or doing something that normally would be work, but because of how I feel, what perspective could you offer that by doing this for somebody, it fills me up? Offering how. Love and generosity and giving is actually what could drive. I mean, you. I don't. What, I don't even know what perspective you would say. You just said it all. It's exactly what it is. The other day at drums, my sons in drums, my daughter and I go down. We get egg rolls while we're waiting for him to get drums. We're walking back. And I see this woman park in the middle of Venice Boulevard, and I go, "Hey, you can't park there." And she goes, uh, "She she was rushing." She was like, "I ran out of gas." She ran out of time. Ran out of gas. She ran out of gas. Like literally died. Oh, her Russian. Car. Yeah. I thought you were saying she ran out of time because she was from the Ukraine. <laughs> so I I said, let me help you push your car. So I helped two other guys help you push your car. Love it. And I said to my daughter, go get your brother. And I go to her, I go, you need to get some gas. And she's like, yeah. I go, why don't we, why don't we take you to the gas station? She's like, oh, you sure? I go, yeah. I go hop in. I tell the kids, I go, we're going to help this woman out. And they're like, okay. They loved it, bro. Mm-hmm. Get to the gas station. They don't sell gas containers. Okay. They, they ran out. I have one at my house. I go, all right. I'm just going to handle this for you. Was this woman in the car with you? Yes. And your kids? Yeah. So she's in the back seat with one of your kids. She's in the front seat. Got it. Kids are in the back. Go to my house. I had ordered pizza for the kids and I was going to make pasta. We grabbed the I go, Reed, go get the pizza. They had delivered it. Take in the back. The two of them are back there eating pizza. We got this lady in the front. I get a gas canister out of my garage. We go to the gas station. I get there. I pull up to the thing. She gets out. I go, I got it. I pay for her gas fill it up, take it to her car, fill it into her car. And then I look at her, I'm like, now you got to go get gas. Like now you have to go fill your tank, right. right? And she's like, yeah. She's like, how do I, what can I, I go, I don't want anything. And she's like, oh my God, you're my angel. And I'm like, hey, someone's going to do it. We're all going to do it at some point for someone else. My kids loved it. I loved it. It felt so good to just do something for someone mm-hmm. else and to not like, I she wanted to like, and I didn't want anything back. It just felt good, but there's no way I can explain. I can't explain what that is. Filling up another woman's take filled you up. Yeah, I'll tell you what that is. Yeah, I'll tell you what that is. Go ahead. It's both offering yourself value, and uh, uh, tapping into your empathy. You are somebody that could help. You are somebody that can make an audience laugh. But also knowing what it could be like to be in that position that that you, you want to help this person. And you know what else it was? It was I like you said. I don't ever want to grow up. I'm the youngest of four. I've always seen myself as a little kid. I don't ever want to grow up. But at that point, I was like, you can be an adult right now. You can just be an adult to this person, help them, and then it's it took us maybe total twenty five minutes. It took you twenty five minutes to get to the gas station, get back home, like, bring some pizza, and get back to the gas station. I'm saying the whole thing, round trip, 25 minutes. Wow. And I, I think if I was going to take a broad perspective on things, if uh, my broad piece of advice mm-hmm. is that there's always time. Mm-hmm. There's always time. When you have kids, when your kid asks a question or needs something and you're busy, you, you could stop and be like, I can handle it. Have you ever like set something in your microwave for a minute and then just try to do things while you wait for it? I get what you're saying. I don't really use a microwave, but I get it. Okay, but all right. So what if it's something else? In a minute, there's so much you can get done. Like if you just prioritize things because you think you need to get them done instead of being like, oh, this will this will benefit this person. Like that woman, that was, I went from school to piano to drums and then I got to get home and make dinner for the kids. We got the pizza. I was going to make pasta and then a, and then a side. And then my, food. you were going to make pasta with the pizza you bought. 
Yes. Do you put the pasta on the pizza? No. Never. Never. Try it. I've heard it's good. I do it sometimes with chicken lo mein, but go ahead. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm saying is there's always time. There's always time. So are you saying when you're busy doing stuff and your kid needs something, there's always time, meaning the kid, I could get to the kid later, there'll be time? Or are you saying whatever I'm doing now, there's time for it, I could go to the kid now? You can take a beat. You can take a beat with anything. If a friend calls, you know, a friend calls, take the call. You can take the call. You can handle it. You can get something else in. If someone else needs something, um, I guess, and that would be a broader thing, in especially in our world, you check in on people, I think would just be the, you know, if someone calls, they're not just calling to check in on you. They're, they're calling probably because they need someone to check in on them, but they're checking. I don't know. Mm. I just think there's always more time. So when somebody calls to check in on me, should I be thinking this person needs something? They no, need checking I, th in on I think it's like, I'd be great. You know, Oh, thanks for checking in. Like, how are you doing? What's going on with you? Or like you even said, like we could have done this coffee to coffee shop because we would have loved to enjoy each other's time, but we get so wrapped up in, oh, I got so much to do. I got to do podcasts. I can't, I'll, I'll, we, we scheduled a time to podcast to hang out because it's like too tough. We live on the other side of town, you know, and we're, whereas maybe next time we like see a lineup and we're like, Hey, I see you're going to be in the lineup. Let's go grab a bite to eat at a place that's not complex for you and super hard for you to before order. Before or after the show? Before. And I can figure out any place It'd be to before. Eat. It'd be before. Because after the show, time. you're going to want to go home. Or you know, like also, what if I'm on early and you're on late or vice versa? You don't want to stay the whole thing. Yeah. You know, dinner before a show I with, with a friend, I haven't done. I normally don't like to eat before a show. Yeah. Because when I'm going to be up for a little bit after the show. I love coming home. I love getting on the couch, watching something and eating. I don't eat past six anymore. Good for you. What time do you go to bed? I try. Uh, I try to go to bed around 1030. Mm. But if I can, ever get into bed at like 839 it's, and be like, why don't I do this every day? Oh, I know. Oh, oh. See ya. I'd like to actually use that as inspiration for a piece of advice I'll give. Oh, I love it. Change is hard. And you could look at that on a very big scale of moving, changing jobs, relationships, sure. But I'm just saying the way the mind works until you condition otherwise, I have to assume, which I haven't done. Change is hard. On a very small level is what inspired it. I'm on the couch. I'm watching TV. I want to, I don't want to go to bed. Not because I don't want to be in bed, which is what I think. It's that I'm here now. This is what it is. Sometimes I'll be in bed. Okay. And it's... uh. Nine o'clock, I took a nap or I lay down for a minute while I took a shower. I didn't want to get dressed yet, whatever it might be. I got some food coming. I'm like, I don't want to fucking go down. I want to eat in bed. I'll bring it back up. I'll eat in bed because I don't want to be down there. I want to be here. But then you get downstairs and you're like, this is great down here. I'll just eat it down here. Mm -hmm. I want to stay down here. I don't want to go to bed. We got to trick ourselves by being in a moment and recognizing how great this thing is. Remember, and this is how I get to bed earlier sometimes now. Rick, I know you think you don't want to go to bed right now. I guarantee you when you're in bed, you're going to want to be there. If you don't, come back down. Come back down. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to bed. Dude, every time you're in bed at 8, 8.30, you think this is the fucking best. You dim the lights. You watch a little something. You read a little something. You got so much time. You ever take a poop? You wipe. And the first wipe, there's nothing there. And you're like, I'm done wiping. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do with the rest of my day? <laughs> that's how i feel when i'm in bed at 8 30 I, I i could well, i could do anything i want mm -hmm. let me look at the hot bar if you know what i mean <laughs> see if i'm interested what do you think i think that's great i i love all that i love all that <laughs> didn't listen to any of it <laughs> no I, I i'm the same I, I, my problem is anytime i'm anywhere that's where i want to be it's the same thing is that a saying. problem though or is that gratitude it's i think it's a bit of a problem because like my kids i'll get my kids to bed and mm -hmm. Let's say it's 8.30 when they're settled in and I'm like, lights are out and everyone's in bed. Now they they fall asleep quick. And then I'm going to go to bed 10.30. I'm like, I get two hours to do what I want to do. And I should probably do a little bit of work. I got to go to bed. Maybe I got to do dishes. And then I got to, I want to watch something. And then I'm like, I want to watch more. I, I want to be able to do more. And it's like, just go to bed, bro. But I, I want more. Yeah, I get that. I love watching more. Yeah, I love watching more, bro. One more episode. You know, television has become a bag of potato chips, and that's why it's important to either buy small bags of chips or watch the lays of TV. But no one can just have just one. Well, here's the thing, though. You don't have to have one. You also don't have to have the bag. Yeah. So buy yourself small bags or plate it. Put a certain amount on a plate, 
And when you run out, if you need more, you go get it. How many times are you not that hungry, but there's some still some food left? Yeah, always. Don't have there be some food left. And that's what I mean by television. That's why I always, when it's late, I will make sure that no matter what episode I'm on, if I've never seen the show, I'm going to now start the, the second last show of the series now. So I can only watch two more. What time do you go to bed? Dude, sometimes I'll go to bed at 8. Sometimes I'll go to bed at 4. 4 a.m.? P.m. No. That'd be amazing. Yeah, a.m. That's crazy. Yeah, I love it. Good for you. Sometimes I'll meet a pretty lady. Hey, you, pretty lady. You know who you are. And she'll come over, right? And she'll get in my bed. And I'll... Uh, Alexa, could you play some R&B music? And then she plays some stuff that's like not what you would think. It's like... It's like Mariah Carey is a little upbeat. It's like, I, it's not no, and I don't know what to say. Like, what am I going to ask for? Cisco? Brian McKnight? I don't know what I'm looking for. I just know when I hear it, it's something, you know? So then I go, Alexa, next. Alexa, next. Now I'm soft, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So then we order something. And she's wondering why she came over, though. Well, at least she came. You know what I mean? Over. And, uh, you know. Nothing makes me softer than going through next, next, next. And this bitch tells me, you can only skip six songs. And I'm like, what do I have? That's I've never heard this before other than when I'm at, I skip all the time. But when I'm having sex, it's something. I know what it is. I just figured it out. I am having Alexa play something in particular, either a Spotify playlist or a particular song. But when I say play R&B, it must be if I'm asking, you could only skip six on a genre. That's where the saying comes from. What saying? You can only skip six on a genre. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have Alexa. I don't even know if you can skip. Mm. You don't have it either, huh? No. Alexa's who I invite over. Unbelievable. No, I do. Go, 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 go. Anything else? I think that's you it. You want to sell people on the special some more? I also, think we've done it. Also, um... If, uh, if for whatever reason this comes out too far after your special, which I don't think so, I'll get it out either right before or right after, but it might be another week after that, still in April. Mm -hmm. I want to put a commercial for your special the week it comes out in whatever episode that is. I love you. So let's do a commercial here. We're going to go in tight. Um, if we could get that that 90s, uh, early 2000s MTV energy, um, you say, what up, guys? And then you say who it is. Yeah. You know how you know what I mean by that? I got it. Yeah. What up, guys? And then you say who it is. Um, and then you gotta you gotta um kind of give them an incentive. So like whether it's I gotta tell you something or you'll never believe this. Then look around to make sure that like people understand this is a secret. They're let, they're they're on the they're on the end. And say you have to go shh, shh, shh. Okay. You, you, do, do these beats make sense? You need me to repeat that. No, I got it all. Whenever you're ready. What's up, guys? Jay Larson. Jay Larson. And I'm letting you know that I got something that you need to know about. Need to know about. April 19th. My new special, Sounds Like Bruce, coming out only on Jay Larson Comedy YouTube channel. That's right. And you guys here at Take Your Shoes Off Podcast are find out before anybody else. Sounds Like Bruce, Jay Larson Comedy on YouTube. Watch it. Perfect. That, has anyone ever told you you took direct you take direction unbelievably well? Tell me the truth. Has anybody ever told you that? I'm a director. But has anybody ever told you that? Um I've never had a director. I'm sure there were times that like, you know, when I worked with David Lynch, he um I never forget he said, What's that guy's name again? And about so, about you? Yeah. And someone said Jay. And he said, Hey Jay. And I was like, Wow, look at this. Now what'd you work with David Lynch on? Twin Peaks. The new one. Um, I think I do take direction pretty you well. Take direction very well. Because uh I listen mm -hmm. and I I hear it and then I kinda get it. If I don't get it, I'll be like, I, no, I need you to explain. But if I get it, I'm like, I got it, let's go, and I just go. Have you ever waited tables? Oh yeah. Question. Yeah. When people gave you orders, mm -hmm. did you write it down or did you remember? I remembered. Hate it. What do you mean? I can do it all. But it's not about your ability. Your, your, it's a huge difference between a normal person ordering and you ordering. What does that mean, a normal person? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, I can still see it that time you're in Vegas and you put that order into room service, Dr. Glassman, right? Dr. Glassman is a different Vegas thing. Oh, okay. That was when you're trying to get a late checkout, but yeah. whatever the other one is, like you're just cut to a clip. 
Thank you for your patience in advance. I have a few questions and some modifications ahead of us. Okay, uh, first of all, and easiest, I'd like to do one of your Belgian waffles with some extra syrup, please. Would I like to add a fruit cup? No, what am I? Of course, give me the fruit cup, baby! The berries are what? We're looking blueberries, raspberries, and the fruit cup is apples or something? This is a silly question, and I can't imagine you know the answer to it. But, are your eggs organic? What does that mean? What do you mean that I want it natural? You got natural and non- What's a non-natural egg? Don't call the chef. We've called the chef enough this trip. But here's what I want to do. Do you guys do hard-boiled eggs? Are they- Are they cold? Yeah, put it in ice water. If they were organic, I'd have them warm. I I'm curious what, 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 what the hash browns are like. Are they buttery? Okay, I'll take some extra crispy. No, no, uh, I don't know if you guys put sour cream or schwitz on it, but just, just, just as is. What non-dairy non alternatives do you have for milk for my coffee? You, you don't have almond milk? Oh, I need a whole pot. You have to do a whole pot of coffee. Is that a really? Sonia, just, just so you know, I'm going to probably have about one bite of this and that's it. But the options are getting me hard right now. Yours are very specific, but I'm pretty good at like remembering an order. If you put an order in right now, you specifically with like the way you tend to order, mm -hmm. it might be tough. And what I might be like, you tend, you know, how people go, what do you mean? You kind, yeah, You're kind, eh, didn't yeah. track. leave it in. So, the thing is, when and, and if you're a waiter or waitress, or I like to just say waiter because it doesn't matter if you're a woman or not. No. That um, we understand that you have this great skill set. Whoa, she could remember? He could remember this all? That's really cool. And let's say you get it right 10 out of 10 times. What you're not considering is the fact that you are making the people at your table uncomfortable. Even if you succeed, you are gambling with our emotions. Right? You want to challenge yourself? What watch do you, you watch need? This. Do you watch, need? Watch, watch, watch this. Place, place, a, place an order for me. You can make it simple. You can make it complicated. Don't wait too long. It just because the point isn't that. Just place a place an order for you and and for uh, your friend who's in the bathroom. All right. I'm okay. Gonna... Hi. Welcome to uh, uh, Teso Restaurants. May I tell you our specials? Sure. We have a lemon encrusted shrimp and we have a bacon wrapped sea bass. Both very very good. If you're interested in fish, our recommendation is always the halibut. Anything you'd like to get started, drink, you're ready to order. I just think it's interesting that you, if we like fish, you're going to recommend a third thing versus the two specials that were both seafood. Can I be honest? Sure. Um, as specials work, a lot of times we're either trying stuff or we have extra. Uh, I want to be transparent. These are specials. If you're a shrimp guy, you will absolutely love the bacon wrapped shrimp, of course. But if you're not sure, I hate my to, favorite I hate is to the halibut. Do this. I hate to do this. It was the bacon wrapped halibut. You said the shrimp was in a lemon encrusted shrimp. Just, just for your own knowledge. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I made a mistake. It is. We also have Bacon, uh, bacon wrap shrimp. <laughs> wow. You're doing great. Can you do me a favor and hold on the special so my buddy gets back from the restaurant? <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I hate to do this. But <laughs> your buddy uh, is at a restaurant and he needs to get back from it? Or is he in the bathroom at the restaurant? Well, the, your bathroom is broken, so he had to go next door to the other restaurant. Mm -hmm. So he's using their bathroom. And then he'll be back. And then you can tell us about the two <laughs> different the two different bacon wrapped <laughs> options today. We'll, we'll wait. Yeah, thanks. But how is everything so far? I mean, we're... The water's like, fantastic. Would you like a lemonade or an Arnold Palmer? It depends on how you make your Arnold Palmer. Put the lemonade in first. And, and what are the percentages? 50-50. Then no, I would 50 not. 50% lemonade I'm sorry, no, and 100% of the iced tea is 50%. Well, what that, do you prefer, more lemonade or more iced tea? You, you t I mean, are you out of your mind? Because if you do more lemonade than 50%, it's just a lemonade. You, what iced tea is going to stand up to a higher percentage of lemonade? Well, our lemonade is fresh lemonade, and so it's really just water and lemons and then we sweeten it ourselves so we sweeten the tea and the lemonade together so it's really what are you just, using for a sweetener we use just raw cane sugar gotcha yeah i'm a 70 30 guy iced tea lemonade oh you can make that happen for my Arnold palmer you can, go, yeah, yeah why don't you put that in yeah uh, you said 70 percent. yeah 70 let me just write that down i'll remember but i just know well do, do you want to write down the percentage of lemonade i'm putting 70 70 percent iced tea yeah and then 30 percent. i just know it's the rest just want to make sure just put 70 yeah i just want yeah. you to write it down okay. it, <laughs> I'll be honest, it looks like you didn't write anything down. And that's what I was trying to get at. That's the point. If you want to memorize it, just fucking humor them. Humor them. For what, though? Are we going to humor everyone in our life? But Can't then actually people... write it down. Let, let them do it. But your people don't realize when they work in a restaurant, they're not in the food business. You know that, right? You know what business they're in? They're in the service, service business. business. You're there to make them feel good. You're made there to make them feel comfortable. You happen to be doing that by giving them food. You're in the service business. I say this to my team all the time. You know, you're an entertainment lawyer. You know what business you're in? The service business. Yeah. How many divorce, 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 divorce? I'm sorry to rub it in. No. How many divorce lovers? Sorry. <laughs> lovers? Many, I just, it seemed like that's what you said earlier. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm the happiest I've ever been. Sorry. This is my buddy. He just back. Oh, absolutely. He just yeah. back. Hey there, bud. 
Um, would you like to hear specials? I don't think we're good. Okay, well, okay, get I you to eat. Uh, we're just we're just gonna have drinks. Well, I already uh, I already got yours written down. You want uh, Arnold Palmer? Normally we do 50-50, but we could do any percentage for what? We're gonna split that 70-30, yeah. So would you like me to give you 35 and 25 and him 35 and 25, or do you want two 70-30s? 35 and 25. That wouldn't have been it. It'd be, it'd 35 be, it'd and 15. 35 and 15, I yeah. was thinking iced tea I, is Did 50%. you write that down? Yeah. Perfect, because I just want to make sure you get those percentages <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, would you would you like um would you like the same percentage? Or would you just like to share in one 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 cup, two straws? No, oh, two cups. So you're not gonna share it. You're gonna get the same thing. Just make it and then pour it into two cups. Well we we make it in the cup. <laughs> yeah, well that's fine. So you want two? Yeah, that'd be great. Great. Let me just put two cups. <laughs> Write it down, bitches. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Service industry, yeah. Yeah. How many divorce How many divorce lawyers are getting their clients tickets to the Lakers? Not many. Not many. Cuz they're in the divorce business. More specifically, they're in the asset management's business. But I'd say 70% of that 30% service. Mhm. Entertainment, you know what they're doing? They're working they're working the weekend to take 5% of the rest of this person's career. But guess what? They're going to get you tickets. They're going to take you out to eat. They're going to service you. <laughs> but you're not serve. You know, I got it. I got it. You All know, right. Everyone does it different. That's fine. So what do you think? Do you like, do you like coming over? <laughs> it's been great. I love it. Is there anything else you want to plug? Mm-mm. You want to plug anybody else's special? No. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it, a, I gave it an honest shot. Let me think about that. No, just mine. Is there anything else that you've done in your career that you want people to like? I really like this guy. Where else could I see him instead of just Googling you? Oh, what yeah. What should you tell him to check well, out? Well, I mean, you can. I, I, I try to put everything. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. Good. Thanks for coming over. No, no dude. Give me a shot. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just I got really hyper playing this game with you. I also got mad that I was thinking 50% lemonade, so I did that 25 instead of 30%. 15. I mean, you had a couple of miss ups. Yeah, well, I was, I'm drunk. Again? You got drunk earlier today. Yeah, I, I'm not separate. Roll drunk. a clip. Oh. And we're back. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, you know, I, I've, I've been doing more directing than I'm doing anything else. That's all I really want to do. Um, so I, I post those all on social. If I direct something, I put it on my Instagram. Everything, pretty much on my Instagram. J Larson, Jay Larson. comedy. J A Y L A R S O N comedy. J Larson was taken, huh? Yeah. There's this other. There's a surfer and there's a musician. Which one has it? I don't know. I just took Jay Larson comedy because that became everything. My website's Jay Larson comedy, YouTube, uh, Twitter before it got hacked. And I just said, take it, <laughs> take it, dude. I don't care. He's killing it now. Yeah. Dude's crushing every now and then. This was like eight years ago too. And I was just like, I haven't been on Twitter in eight years. And I was like, uh, every now and then somebody hit me up like, you know, your uh, Twitter got hacked. And I'm like, bro, you know, that happened eight years ago. What are you, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> what are they selling? Selling iPads? Yeah, seriously. Um, but where do people see you? I like this guy. What should we check out? Check out my special. I, I have some road dates that I put up there. I'll be uh, in Go Bananas in Cincinnati. I'll be at Laugh Bo- in, in May. I'll be Laugh at Button. Laugh Boston, July You ever play 1st. the Laugh Button? No, where's that? Right here. Dun, dun. That's what she said. Did you have that made? No, somebody gave it to me. But I'll tell you this. You know who you are. But I'll tell you this. I want to for have for merch have because I have a lot of sayings. I want yeah. to have one of these custom made that say my custom sayings. Like, gotta get you something to drink. Uh, how's your mother? Uh, and you know, I am phenomenal. You didn't ask me about my mother at all. Well, after what happened to your father, I didn't want to open a can of worms. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, um. All right. I'll take great. a Polaroid and we'll get on out of here. Love it, buddy. Tell people to check out pod.snaps. That's P-O-D dot S-N-A-P-S on Instagram, where I have almost nothing up there. But I'm working on curating to get all of the Polaroids from this. And this is going to be close to episode 200, getting all the Polaroids. And then they'll be posting them up there before the episodes come out. So if they want a sneak peek at who's coming up, they could go to pod.snaps. It's not really ready, but if you give it a follow, you want to do that in your Yo! MTV, sticking with all the same beats. Do you remember the beats? Um, yeah, pod.snaps. Yep. What's up, guys? Jay Larson here. I'm coming on to tell you something that no one else is finding out. Do you want to know what's coming up on Take Your Shoes Off podcast? 
Well, now go over to pod. I'm sorry, dot- I interrupt just because I know we're not going to use it. Remember, you got to tell them, and then tell them, come here, come here. Okay. Look around. All right. What's up, everybody? Jay Larson sorry. here. You had a great energy before. Let's go into that. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Larson here, and I got something. Okay. Whenever you're ready. What's up, bitches? Jay Larson here. You know me from MTV. You know me from VH1. You know me from V66. Let's go. Shout out. I got something to tell you that no one else knows. And this is what she said. You want to find out more about who's coming up on Take Your Shoes Off podcast? Go to pod.snaps for every Polaroid that's ever been taken of every guest on every one of the episodes. And I'm the only one that's telling you about it. Why? Because I'm your boy, Jay Lawson. Brilliant. Check out that Polaroid and more at pod.snaps. And if I'm not at home, show, make sure it goes around. My name's Rick Glassman. Scoot do. Bubbity blue. Saw you walking down the street. Pay attention. I can't do it. I wish I had more talent. You have too much talent. You know who has too much talent for me? Jamie Foxx. God. Is, name someone more talented and I'll take a dump. 58 minutes later. Do me a favor. Yeah. Sign right here. You know who, you know who I was going to say, though, in regards to your podcast? Is who? that Adam Ray. Um, most talented in, uh, give some more specifics. You're saying with all the voices? He can do voices. He can sing. He can improvise. He, he just goes with it. He is just... He also works harder than so many fucking people. Hey, there's a reason he's uh, the most uh, the most consistently guested guest on the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Is he? Oh, yeah. He's been on, I don't know the exact number, but more than 10 times. I would say close close to 20. I mean, it's just wild. I've hit him up so many times over the course of the years. And what? just said, like... Well, listen, I, I, I kept this in because I love a nice Adam Ray uh, uh, shout out. So let's end this podcast. Um, and uh, let me say thank you so much for coming over. Congratulations on the special. Thanks for having me, buddy. And uh, make sure you go over there. Watch at least five minutes because I don't want to say watch it and make them. I want to be very honest because I'm doing a lot of plugs here. Mm-hmm. Watch at least five minutes and then decide. But when you go over there, Make sure you show some love. Give it a thumbs up. Give a comment. Let them know that you were there. Help the algo. And would you say, because I, I haven't seen it, mm-hmm. would you say if they watch five minutes, they're going to want to watch more? Or do they need, is it like a, a slow burning show where they need to give it 10 minutes? I, At what point are they going to be like, I want to finish this? I think you're going to want to watch. I think I open on a seven minute story. So, so watch the first story. Watch the first story. So if you're going to say, listen, I don't want you to commit to an hour. I'm not asking of that. If you want to, I would love it. All I'm asking is for seven minutes. I think there's a lot of different things in it. There's like quick stories. There's long stories. There's crowd interaction. There's a really great story at the end. But that's not what's going to sell people. What's going to sell people is is giving them something easy that they want to do. Seven minutes is easy. Sure. An hour isn't. Sure. But if you think that if they watch seven minutes, they're going to be like, I got to finish this. Can't yawn on that. Dude. That's the worst sales. I'm really trying like give a, a, a realistic call to action here. Yeah, I would. Yes. Give. Go ahead. Give it five minutes. You're going to want to watch seven because that's the first joke. Give it at least seven minutes. Yes. And what do you want them to comment? It can't be the exact same thing because you don't want all the same comments. We'll give them something that's comment something like this. So there's a little game. I've never done that before. I, don't, I Comment Jay has a little penis. Oh, no. Why don't you just say... Uh, Kicked my shoes off for this and loved it, or something. Ooh, lo- bring so it we, they know yeah, so we know Tyso that. sent me. Uh, I'm a I'm a goblin. Jay has a little penis. Stuff like that. Yeah, but I'd say the little penis stuff we could probably leave out. Yeah, well, make sure that the first note Tyso sent me. Yeah, and, and say then something like Jay, I kicked Jay's my penis shoes off, small or something like that. Or just maybe like you know, I took kick my shoes off for this. Yeah, well, they t- t- take my shoes off, take my shoes off before, so I could take my pants off just like Jay does before we see his little penis. Thank you so much for coming on over. Thanks a lot, man. Absolutely. Does that...
Fifi music. My, my snap and I'm <laughs> shocked how oh, hard it is. Like my hands are frozen. And then you're forming like a weird Scoop pattern of snapping that <laughs> doesn't make sense. Oh, yeah! Skid a bit of